Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Municipal Budget Committee meeting. Um, we have a workshop session tonight. Tonight is December, oh, can you believe it already? December 1st, 2015. If everyone would rise and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag and of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Pay attention and get a left As usual, I'm going to go around the table so that a secretary remote can know who is here this evening, as well as our guests. Thank you, Jesus. And um, I'll start over here with you, Nick. Sure, Nick Bridal. Scott Blair. Matt Pierce. Maureen Buckley. Sonny Kravitz. Jim Lockham. Brian Lapham. Eileen Latimer Chair. Stephen LaBranche. Jones. <laughs> Citizen, that is. Yeah. Sandra Nicholson. <laughs> Mike Pluff. Jerry's and I here. Phil Bean. <laughs> you too. Okay. Oh. Rich Sawyer, Chief of Police. <laughs> Dave Hobbs, Deputy Chief. Thank you, Dave. We, as not in the past, no. we now have a secretary of remote. So we let her know who's here. I bet she's real happy about that. <laughs> well, I, I, I bet almost anybody would be happy about that. <laughs> Do it to our normal hours. Huh? Do it to our normal hours. No, we just hours. ran out of room up here, so we are good. Um, this evening, before we start, with your budget, I'm just going to uh, clean up a little bit of a few things here. Wrong book. Just a little bit on correspondence. Um, we put forth the consent agenda last week. I'm going to go over the things that right now are a non-issue. Um, Number four has been sent. I think I got that out to everyone. The response on the insurance. In and I understand, um, and Fred, you can yell at me from the background there, that last night the selectmen okayed, um, let's see, three four and six for that information to come to us that's right <laughs> okay and we will see that by friday by thursday i'll we'll tell you that we're right in the middle of uh, getting the audit finished we're in the middle of uh, a whole bunch of stuff including warrant articles and month, month end uh, appropriations and <coughs> we'll get to you as soon as we can mm -hmm. um can you give me a a little bit more concise time frame for that, Fred. <laughs> yeah. Assessing is coming from the assessor, not from us. Right. Okay. He doesn't report to me. I have no control over him. All right. Then I'll take that one off your list and yeah. I'll contact him directly. The selectmen have asked him to do that as soon as he can. I appreciate that. And the other questions coming from you? The IT subcommittee. Is that, that one of those? Uh, from you, I, I guess the contracted services number three is coming from the assessor. Yep. Yes. Number four has been answered. Number five, I think, is very important based on the Warren articles, and that has to do with the um, designated fund balance. Well, we'll inquire the auditor. Uh, I can't give you an exact figure. I can give you a figure of four million five hundred five hundred thousand dollars, but that's not exact. And that is on hand. That's yep. cash balance. That's correct. That's that's the amount of surplus. Cash. 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 There's or no such thing as cash or in the municipal government. Or anticipated. Is there a liquid asset? It's an asset. Is it liquid? Depends on how you look at liquid. <laughs> oh, okay. Let's stop. <coughs> okay. stop okay. It's defined by generally accepted accounting practices. No, there, there's it's no not. such thing as cash in, in municipal government. 
Is it a liquid asset as defined by general accounting principles? Yeah, well, the problem is that the legislature makes the accounting principles for municipal governments, not general accounting systems. So when you look at um, the amount of money that we have outstanding, which averages somewhere around $1.7 million in unpaid taxes where our money comes from, that's certainly not what I would call liquid. But it is an asset, and the auditors do book it. So when do you think the auditors will be getting to the point where they can tell us what we really have, Fred? Well, you'll have to ask the auditors. I don't speak for them. They don't speak for me. I mean, this is December, and it, I think it's almost 11 plus months now since we ended the year, and the auditors usually get finished in the spring. Here we are at the end of the year. I mean, uh, and we, uh, we, we'll need those exact figures to do warrant articles that dip into the undesignated fund. So keep that in mind. We're not, I won't approve or even <coughs> look at ones that have dip into undesignated without knowing those numbers spread. Well, I can only tell you we'll have the numbers when the auditors report them and actual figures. Well, somebody it should be relatively okay. soon. When are the auditors due to be in? Are they scheduled to come in, Fred? They're going to come before the board as soon as we uh, receive the audit. Then they will be coming to the board of selectmen to make a presentation. So they have hopefully before the end of this year. I'm sorry. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks. They were hopefully finishing up the audit yesterday. So they were finishing up the audit yesterday and they have to put that together and get it to yes. the board. So they can and then review be it before they come. And then be scheduled them. to come in? Mm -hmm. Yes. This could create an impact on Warren articles, as, as Mike said, that are looking to be funded from those amounts. And I'll, I'm going to move on from that. Um, that leaves um, one and six. I'll knock out six first. Um, I did speak to um, Ellen Lavin, town treasurer, and she had already made plans for this evening. She offered to come in on the 10th. But I suggest to all of you for discussion, um, if it's necessary to actually bring her in or to send her written questions, that we will go over that night. So. Um, I think our schedule is uh, too tight on the phone. We could have accommodated her this evening, I think, but uh, the rest of our schedule is pretty tight. In fact, I think we might need to add an additional meeting or two uh, sometime in January. Yeah. Uh, so the only alternative is to uh, generate questions. I would suggest that uh, I could s centralize some questions. So if anyone has any, send them to me. I'll formulate some questions on my own as well. And present them to Thursday night's meeting for your approval. To send to the treasurer. Does that make sense? My only fear with that is that um, the only written correspondence that we've gotten from her so, for, so far uh, has created a lot. Her to come in. It, it, it created a lot more questions, mm -hmm. um, and it would be easier if she was available. I mean, I, I definitely see the benefit of having her presenting her with a list of questions, mm -hmm. and then maybe having her come in and explain those answers. Right. Um, I think once we get the answers, we can decide whether we need further explanation. Yeah, I mean, if we could do, you know, sometime late January or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely see if we, if we need to add something in there to, to, to do that, I mean, it's, yeah. it's worth it. So just send me the questions, uh, hopefully by tomorrow night, and I'll have them prepared Thursday for a Thursday night's meeting for you guys to mash it up or otherwise approve it. And then we'll send it on to the chairman, to the treasurer. And that way we don't have to schedule her unless we find more ambiguity in her answers. I'm okay with that. Anyone not okay with it? Want to talk to the neighbor? All right, so we go. Okay. I have an issue. Uh, we have made a point on this board that everything goes through the chairman. What does that have to do with the conversation? It has no, to do I, I with understand. the fact that, um, and, and I'm not, this is nothing against uh, Mr. Jones, but. So you would feel better if all the questions were sent directly to me? Yes. Okay. I don't have a problem with that. All it's right. It's just been our policy. So you want to lead that way, send them out in written form, and go, from, go over them for Thursday? 
and bring them to the meeting place and that will beat them to death. Yeah. All right. That was as soon as she could be available to come in. So not wanting to waste her time and realizing we're in a little bit of a time crunch ourselves, we'll do that. Okay. And then the last one going backwards actually was number one on the consent agenda um, where last night, Fred, I believe you and the Board of Selectmen mm -hmm. took exception with a visit to DPW by Mike and by Jerry for some fact-finding. Correct? Yeah, this budget committee. The budget committee is not an operational board. Mm -hmm. The selectmen are. Okay. Anything that's not operational will provide. And anything that's operational is outside your purview okay. by statute. So if that, if that question, let me ask you this. If that <coughs> question was reworded, Removing operational. Give it a try. Madam Chair, I don't it, send it to us. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. I don't know what statute he's referring to. If you don't, then you shouldn't be on this committee because it's your statute. All right, my statute is 32 colon 16, duties and authorities of the budget committee, Roman numeral 2. <coughs> your job, according to that statute, says, is to review the Madam budget Chair? prepared by the Excuse Board of Selectmen. Excuse me, Fred. <coughs> Go ahead, Tim. Under Roman numeral two, it says our duty is to confer with the governing body or bodies and with other officers, department heads, and other officials relative to estimated costs, revenues anticipated, and services performed to the extent deemed necessary by the budget committee. Operational procedures are, in fact, services performed. Well, your definition and, is not the town and, and, and so there it is right in RSA 32 duties and authority of the budget committee the last sentence of this says it is the it shall be shall be the duty of all such offices and other persons to furnish such pertinent information to the budget committee so yes I do know the statute that we operate under I and it clearly says services performed to the extent deemed necessary by the budget committee. With now, the budget problems. committee decided that the extent that we need to evaluate the services performed include operating procedures, then that is what it is. Well, that's out of order. Jim, I'm going to, Scott? I don't think we're going to resolve anything here. I we're don't think we're going to get a shouting either. contest. I think we ought to move on. I'm sorry, I have a bad throat, so I have to really throw it out there so I can be heard. Madam Chairman, my suggestion is that this budget committee get an educational course in the entire statute, not in one half of a paragraph. Actually, we did. Okay. Gentlemen. Too bad you didn't pay attention. I did. I got it on recording. I wanted right. a comfortable time. Everybody unlike certain people who like you want to throw objects around, Tim? or I would say is around, as though they were candy. Thank you for the candy, Mr. Bean. You're welcome, sir. All right. Gentlemen. Well, I'm going to take the floor. Okay. Or well, we'll see an early adjournment to this meeting. Purpose of the fact-finding is to help these departments in this town prepare a budget. <clears throat> to listen to what they need, in some cases see what they need. Those of us at times who don't get to every nook and cranny and decide, and decide as we are charged to make a reasonable budget. It is not to interfere with the operations and I would say that was not the intent, Fred, was to interfere with operations. We would, we would hope not, Madam Chairman, but after reading the chairman of your, <coughs> your delegation's letter to the town, there was no question in our mind that, in fact, all the operations were going to be reviewed in detail. Well, no, I would sit here and say that is to the negative. That was not the intent. intent what we are looking at is Five million dollars worth of warrant articles for DPW. That's a lot of money where our budget is concerned. And whether it's in the form of a warrant article or in the form of a budget, it's a lot of money. There's a lot of needs on the table. And the two gentlemen sitting at this table that were put out there as the delegates not as a subcommittee, but as delegates for the, the budget committee. 
are perhaps of those here the most um, qualified, having both been former selectmen. I know Jerry spent a lot of time at DPW during his tenure, and Mike has spent his entire life in one way or another. So we weren't just sending anyone haphazardly. I think our intent needs to be made very clear. We're not looking to interfere. We're, in we're looking to send qualified people to have an open discussion and just review the needs. Not sit there and tell you how to operate DPW, but the needs for the things that we are, money is being requested for from the taxpayers. So that when we come back and we recommend or not recommend these Warren <laughs> articles. They're done from a factual standpoint, not from an emotional standpoint, and definitely not from a void, which is what we seem to have from an informational gathering standpoint. So I would say this was done in the most uncontentious way and not to be made into a battle zone. That's our intent. Now, if one word in there operational through this whole thing south, I apologize for that. I can rewrite that and take that word out. The intent is to discuss what is going to go on the Warren Articles, what is needed from the standpoint of money only. Well, I suggest you, Madam Chair, is that you do that, that you rewrite that. May I remind, respectfully remind the Chair? Yes, sir that unless you appoint a subcommittee, the only way anyone on this board can, can in fact do what you're suggesting is if the board calls a legally posted meeting and all, a majority of the board goes. You may appoint subcommittees under the statute and they have the right to represent you. Delegates <coughs> do not have a right to represent you under the statute because they have to conduct minutes and prepare minutes, which nobody has ever seen from the subcommittees. But the statute's very specific. You can have committees. And anyone, and any board and committee that's elected, appointed, or whatever can do that. They have to keep minutes. Anything other than committees or subcommittees, you have to have the entire board present. I suggest you re-review the statute in that regard. We will revisit this conversation later on in the evening um, as we have our police chief here to give us his budget. Thank you, Fred. Madam Chair. I'm moving on, Tim. We'll discuss it more later. All righty. What page are we on, Okay, OBS, OBS 7 uh, and page 14. Numbers again, I'm sorry. OBS, OBS 7, 7 and page 14. Thank you. And if it pleases everyone here, I'd like to take it section by section and stop and go around with questions after each section. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to you, Chief Sawyer. Uh, Madam Chair, what, do you want me to line by line or just uh, is let me give you what uh, what we received. The direction we received from the, uh, the manager was to come in as close to last year's budget as mm -hmm. we could. Uh, I think we've done a pretty good job of that. Uh, I know there's probably going to be some questions in some areas where you see an increase or a decrease. There are a number of them we, uh, we looked at. Uh, there's been no change or very little change. Do you want to focus on the, the ones that are a bigger change, or how would you like to, to handle that? Well, this year we have the book in two different places, so bear with us. Okay. We don't have Whatever format you would like. Running the way it usually does. When you said sections, did you mean like we're going to start with subtitle of administration? <sighs> yeah, I'd like, to go, I'd like to go through public safety because... There are questions in each section instead of doing the whole thing. I mean, this yeah. is a multi million dollar That's budget. Fine. So I assume we'll start with administration. Let's go. Yeah. Right. I, Tim, I would have to agree with you on that. If we someone did try. No, I, I agree with you more than you believe, but it just, <laughs> chronology works for me. It's just, I, I want to try to save us some time because there are areas where mm -hmm. 
you're going to see very little increases or changes oh. that we probably don't have to beat that right. to death. But right. if you have some questions, I, I, I want to make sure you understand where we're coming from. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I did try to accomplish this time around last year, I got thrown into this right at the last second as, as Chief Sullivan retired. I had a little more time to work on it this year, and I tried to drill numbers down uh, to a greater accuracy based on the current staffing and the people we have and the pay rates. So I think we'll see a little bit of uh, better accounting in that area. And the other issue was, I know, Tim, we've talked about it, is some of the labeling of the account numbers. We do need to work on that. And, and I did not disregard it. I just didn't have time to get to that part of it this time around. So we're going to have more fun with radio maintenance? Um, <laughs> probably a little bit. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, but I think I cleared some of that up. But we're going to try to work on that as we move forward. Um, but I, I just didn't want you to think I didn't hear you. I did, but I thought the numbers were more important this time around for me to get drilled down on that and try to get these things into the accounts where they belong the best I could. I appreciate you calling that out. Okay. So if you want to start with... Administrative. We'll go to that subtotal. We're going up by 1.64% in the administrative subtotal. Mm -hmm. Are there any questions in any of the particular line items that I can address in that area? Yep. Go ahead, yes, sir. Um, the, uh, there's no current year holiday pay expense um, or incentive. <laughs> and there and actually is. What you have is the, num the numbers that were, I believe, effective on 930 or 15. Is that what you're seeing? Well, October. I think it's through October. Right? No, let's do a 930. 930 or 15. Right. Okay. Those literally just got paid last week. Those always get paid by contract. The first pay period towards December. It's always the end of November, beginning of December when those get paid. Really? They get paid in one lump, yeah. In one lump. Chrissy, yeah. do we have a new figure on that? Nope, as soon as you have November numbers, you will though. And on the November financials when you have them, those numbers will be in there. Career incentives, same thing? Yes. Right. Career incentives and holiday pay are always paid at the end of November or the beginning of December. It's not a big number, but the vehicle maintenance, if you take the average from 2011 to 2015, is uh, $1,843. Okay. And and we're asking for $3,680. It's 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 a you know it's a 131 percent increase. So, but not a great deal of money. I mean, it's, is this something? Well, vehicle maintenance, and I'm not going to question your numbers. I'm looking at what we. Um Budgeted, our actual in 14 was 1,572. Our actual to date this year is 1,326. Yeah. I expect we're probably going to exceed 2014. Uh, the last couple of months of the year, we're going to have, and again, this is reflective up to 930 or 15. So I can tell you right now, we're already in excess of that number. Um, Vehicle maintenance. So oh, I dropped in October. Through October, it's uh, 1,326. Yeah. The same number we had in uh, September. Yeah. But that's going to increase uh, just with oil changes. The de and those, keep in mind, those are the admin vehicles. That's my vehicle, the deputy's vehicle, and the prosecution vehicle. So I, I anticipate that that's going to go up. Um, and it's just one of those things with expenses and vehicles, we have to have a little bit of a buffer zone in there. We don't know what's going to break and what's not. Thank you. Anything else in this section? Brian? Go ahead. Um, I'm still confused. A holiday pay and career incentives, that's going to be paid at the end of the year? No, it's already been paid, Brian. Right. It was paid. paid last week. That's why you don't see that reflected in the numbers out to 930 or 15. Those were paid out the last pay period. Those by contract get paid at the end of the year for the full-time officers, and they're the ones who are eligible for the holiday pay and the uh, career incentive. And encumbrances, are they all used up yet? I have 19413 No, they are not. Those administrative encumbrances you from? Yes. Um, are these for something specific? Or? The biggest number of that 19,000 is an encumbrance of 15,900, uh, which was encumbered for the uniform allowance. We utilized that uh, to outfit the new officers coming in. 
And I believe the actual number is um, now down to available is $5,770 in that account now. We have spent a, a bit of that down now. 5070 That's what's available now in that uniform allowance line. But the original encumbrance was 15900 So that wasn't in the administration already? Yes. Yes, it was? Yeah. yeah. Now, what will also happen, I think you'll see some of that go down as part of the uniform allowance. I believe that also covers things for things like the honor guard, awards, uh, some patches that we need to get for the new, for people coming in for new uniforms. So some of that will get spent down within the next couple of weeks. I don't believe we're going to do all 5,000, but probably two to 3,000 of that is going to get spent. Supplies and expenses, kind of, I can see that evening out by the end of the year. Um, and that's all I have. Thank you. Okay. Chief, uh, if you do supplies and expenses. You do. I'm going to go right there, Tim. <coughs> I, just I can't left that for you. <coughs> can't help myself. Okay, so that covers our annual software support. Uh, our mobile data terminals, WAP packages, and annual internet service. Um, that's going to go up 12.424%, and that's due to anticipated fee increases and upgrades. Is that what you're referring to, Tim? Is the up, the uh, increase? Uh, no, I just thought this would be an opportunity to talk about your your uh, IT activity in general. Uh, you have do you have personnel dedicated to servicing uh, IT related uh, ancillary duty for uh, a lieutenant and uh, I believe two patrolmen and a system in that area, and then we'll bring in contractors if we need. Are they working full time on that, or do they have other duties? Ancillary duty, no. Ancillary duties. Okay. The lieutenant that handles this is also my training coordinator mm -hmm. um, and facilities manager, so and he's the one most suited to do the IT for us in, internally. Okay. Does you have a sense of what percentage of his time he spent on that, the role of uh, technology? I'd say this year because I, I began uh, my tenure as chief by having an audit conducted mm -hmm. of the system, so I had a better understanding of where we were and where the deficiencies were, particularly in the area of security, with everything going on in the world. Right. And the fact that we do we do have a lot of sensitive material, and we're connected to other computers that are sensitive, federal and state government. Right. Uh, so I had that audit done. Uh, I would have to say that he's in the 40 to 50 percent range on, on okay. computers. There's quite a bit that goes with it. And the other, the other three individuals were more in the 20 percent, I would guess. I would say less than that, simply because one of the folks that we selected for that works up on the midnight shift. Because what would happen if we had a a, a computer failure, a connectivity issue between the PD or the cruisers or the PD? and uh, Department of Safety and the FBI, the lieutenant would have to come in and get that up and running. So instead of having him coming in, we have a, a patrolman that works primarily midnights to so try to help front him. end support. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, most of your computers, I assume, would be inside patrol cars? No, we have mobile data terminals in the cruisers. Okay. okay. The computers, that we have are primarily in the PD. We have, I believe, I'm going to estimate that we have over 30 workstations in the building okay. between the admin wing, patrol, prosecution, detectives, and the booking room. Mm -hmm. And I'd have to get you an accurate number on the number of. Uh, I don't need an accurate, just a yeah. general sense is fine. Do you, do you have servers there as well? Yes, we do. Uh, guess on that number? Well, we have put it this way you put it in perspective. I have. <coughs> Four servers, mm -hmm. just for my video surveillance system internally in the building. Right. So we have a number of servers to also deal with all of our data, our data storage. Right. Um, our, we have to have a separate server for anything that connects to the NCIC system, because we can't have anything that can come in from the outside that could get you access to a Basically federal firewall database. firewall to ex external government entities. Yeah, so there's, okay. there's quite a bit to it. The exact number of servers we have, I, I can't answer that right now. I can get you that answer if you want it. Okay. No gut feel, though. Huh? I'll take a gut feel. I'm not needing precision right now. I'm going to say we're probably in the vicinity of 8 to 10, somewhere okay. in that area. Fair enough. Fair enough. Um, <clears throat> 
Now, you said you did an audit earlier this year. Mm -hmm. I would assume the audit probably found some deficiencies. Not in the security area. I was actually uh, oh, really? very pleased in the okay. security area um, because we do get the state police comes in annually mm -hmm. to look at that we're following protocols to use what's called the spot system. So when we pull somebody over and we run their license either over the radio or the officer does it through the data, uh, the data terminal, um, we have to follow certain protocols. Anybody that's accessing that has to have the proper security right. clearances and all that. And we actually get rated very highly on our training. Um, we have specific training just to that okay. for the officers and the updates. It's department-wide and the new officers come in, they get a package on what you can and can't do and what your requirements are. So we actually do very, very well in that area. Our biggest area we had that we improved upon was the manner in which the information went between dispatch and the mobile data terminals. There was some issues that we had that we, back in the day, we saved a lot of money using a system that we knew at some point was going to be outdated and obsolete, and we kind of got to that point where it was working too slow, and we had to change to an air card system in the cruisers right. to, to make that faster and more reliable. Mm -hmm. So we accomplished that. It's about the same cost annually, but there are some initial costs to get it all the cruisers changed over to that system. But that was really the biggest efficiency is that area there and the Lieutenant did a pretty good job making that transition over. But Portsmouth Computer Group came in, uh, did the assessment for us. It's, uh, I know it's their group that a number of agencies have used similar to us for that security issue and some of the issues I've described. My main concern is that you have in your budget uh, all of the technology needs that you have, you have a need for, especially given that you've done a recent audit. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know there's some related warrant articles, which, which we probably we shouldn't get, get into right now, that might uh, strain the system a little bit. Putting your regard your video service, for example, but we'll talk about that yeah. when it's warrant article time. Uh, there's also a crime associated with the internet, as I'm sure you're well aware, and I'm sure you have technologies that are servicing that investigation area. Are you talking about, uh, we do have a detective that's assigned to the Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force. Okay. Um, we are fortunate because of our participation, we have received a lot of investigative tools through that okay. uh, on grants or donated to us um, through Homeland Security. Uh, this detective, although it's, it's not a full-time task force, it's an ancillary duty. He yeah. does spend most of his time doing it because he's probably one of the top forensic computer people in the state of New Hampshire, so he's constantly working doing work for federal agencies, other local agencies, downloading phones and computers. And I'll be the first one to tell you, I am not a technology person. Yep. So I hire smart people that are. Mm -hmm. And I think you'd find that Detective Gilroy is as good as they get in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, he's been requested to go down and teach now for Homeland Security. He's well, that good at it. The Internet is, is an uh, interesting t uh, investigative tool i got to be honest, Tim, most of the investigations we get involved in now, I couldn't be involved in because I don't have the knowledge and the skill that these younger people do. Right. They grew up with it. And almost every investigation we do now, and we all know with the drug cases and all that, everybody does business on these. And how do you get into it with passwords and without losing it? So we have to have people that are up to speed on that. So I, I think we've accomplished that. So is, is, is there a technology um, knowledge to spread out through your force, or at least among your younger officers, in which you can rely on that rather than have a, a central function for it? No, we, and what we try to do is we, we have some new development, you know, in law enforcement. We have to send somebody away to get that knowledge and bring it back. Right. But then we bring it back and we spread it out. So, okay. you know, Detective Gilroy has been my primary guy in that area just because that's what he does with, it, with that task force. Okay. But he's also training up the other detectives, the SROs, because those are the people that deal with that on a daily basis. Because if it was just him, you know, I'd, it would be impossible to keep up with the volume. Um, so he's been training up the other detectives on how to use this technology. Spreading approaches like that is, is a wonderful thing. I, I applaud your, your management style in that area as well as other areas. Thank you. And uh, I appreciate continuing to see improvement in the Hampton Police Department year over year for the last four or five years that I've been observing it. Thank you. So thank you for your, uh, your service. I appreciate that. Thank you, Madam Chair. Jerry was, and then Nick? I was going to stay on IT if, if, okay. if that's what I'm doing. It should be very brief. Um, <clears throat> uh, I've been on your website a number of times. Uh, I asked the library when they come in, does the, the department have a specific policy on the content that gets uploaded to your website? 
and or who is in charge of creating content to put it on the website? Lieutenant Goditis again mm -hmm. is the IT person, and he he manages the website for us. Uh, what what particular type of stuff are you talking about? So uh, it, it was more of a, a thing of um, I think security is where we came from when we were discussing in the IT subcommittee on uh, <coughs> what gets posted on on public web pages um, and the response of who. Where does the buck stop when it comes to responsibility for the content on the website? We, we do have a section where people can offer their public comment. And I, 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 w I refuse to just be a censor. If pe people want to offer criticism of the Hampton Police Department and it's on our website, I'm okay with that. Okay. I think it's actually healthy. Okay. If it gets to the point of being derogatory or anything that is racist or, or sexist or anything along that line, we remove it. Mm -hmm. But if somebody just simply says, I didn't appreciate the way I was treated by this, you know, an officer during a stop, I think that's healthy. I think we should be looking at that. I think people should be able to criticize the police, and this is the way you do it now. Excellent. It's through the technology. So it's just only if it goes over the line of, of appropriate do we remove anything. Yeah. Uh, and the, the, reason, the reason I ask is um, uh, on the IT subcommittee with Mr. Jones, we were, we were trying to gauge where the town was in um, – uh, adapting to new technology and getting information out to the public. It sounds like you have a wonderful staff who uh, is very in tune to this stuff. Um, and like I said, your website is very informative. Um, I've we are making some improvements. The deputy's taking the lead on some of the social media issues, setting up. We're going to try to get the Twitter account up and running. Um, Which is a great way to get the younger. Well, I think it's a good way to let people know what's going on, that if we have traffic issues, I mean, that's the biggest problem. People come down and we got a problem on the bridge and they drove all the way down the beach to get there. And now if they want to get to Seabrook Beach, they've got to drive all the way around. Maybe if they had seen that up on Route 1, it would have saved them a lot of time. Yeah. And the little things that are helpful in the community with social media, it's just we have to be careful with the social media. <laughs> is the, I agree with you. The content that gets put out there, and yeah. we have to remind the officers of that too. It's, it's everybody tough. has it's one tough of, today. Everybody <laughs> has one of these, including the officers. Exactly. The one thing that I make sure, guys, you know, when you're working and you go to a crime scene, don't be taking pictures because we're going to seize your phone. Yeah because it has evidence and content, and you don't want to be posting that on Facebook or anywhere else. Well, that actually uh, segues into my next question. Um, in, in my prior experience, as we were issued cell phones, and that's all of... Um, I, I don't know if the town does that, because I know that we have computers and cars. My mindset was more for the part-timers that are walking down the beach. Do they have... And it goes more to the security thing. I know when I was a probation officer, I could look up an app on my phone and, and do uh, access some of my stuff from my phone, and that's why the state issued us state-issued <coughs> cell phones. We have very few issued phones. My, the administrative staff, detectives uh, have them. As far as that, what you're talking about, no, we don't have that ability right now. Okay. I would say in the future, what you're going to wind up seeing officers carrying is they're going to get issued a data terminal, mm -hmm. probably just a little bit bigger than this. So their ability to be on a walking beat and pull somebody over or trying to ID somebody, we already have it in the cruises where they can just run the magnetic strip through. It'll populate in the motor, mobile data terminal, and it, it just it expedites the process. Yeah. So they're having to write everything down and delaying people for 20 minutes, we can reduce that contact to 5 or 10, yeah. which makes people happy. Yeah. But on a walking beat, unless a cruiser pulls up that has a capability, they don't have that. They're over the air, tying up air time. I would say... You might see it before the end of my career <coughs> where every officer is going to be issued what you're talking about yeah. and that ability, but that will have to be under similarly a secure link just like the mobile data terminals are right. in the cruises. It's just everything is getting miniaturized. Yeah. We're just not there yet. Okay. I just wanted to make sure that, that was... Um, it's coming. Yeah, if it, I didn't know if it was something we already had because I was... No, not yet, but it's coming. <laughs> but uh, that's all the questions I have. Thank you, guys. Great job. And, uh, Jerry, Chair. And yeah, I'm getting back to the uniform uh, allowance. Uh, there's a note here... <clears throat> I missed uh, initially, but I picked it up yesterday. For uniform allowance, it says the 2015 actual is 12941 Now, I'm assuming that means with respect to uniform allowance for the administration area. Jerry, As opposed I, to the 15285 I think you're looking at the wrong line, Jerry. What I have, the encumbrance. Well, does that note pertains to uniform allowance? 4900 under admin, uniform allowance. I have a fifteen thousand nine hundred dollar encumbrance from fourteen. The budget for fifteen was four thousand four hundred fifty. Right. So the actual now is fourteen thousand five hundred seventy nine. Yes. So I, that, I see that. Okay. Great. All right. So I'm not. Well, sure my what problem here is that this note says that the the actual should be twelve nine forty one, and the encumbrance should not be placed where it is, but should be moved to support services. 
as I understand it. That 023, 42105, 4, 4, account is support yep. services. So that encumbrance of 15900 as I understand it, should be moved to the support services and there should be no encumbrance for you and uniform allowance in administration. Is that, Christy, can you help me there? So you don't like the line that's currently in, you'd like to see it in a different line? Well, I mean, if, if there is no encumbrance there, you've spent 14579 when your budget's 4450 But I think, Jerry, if we, we used common sense and yes. we took that fifteen nine and put it into the line you're talking about. Uniform allowance for administration? Budget. For, no, the other one As you're talking about. Support, e support services. Support yeah. That's what, because I reviewed that account today, just so you know, because yeah. I saw that kind of go through the ones that I thought people yeah. might ask questions. Yeah. And I found that what that is, is it's exactly what we had intended. The encumbrance was spent on the new officers coming in. Support. Instead of with, it's but support. it should have been in that, I agree with you. All right. It so probably what, should have been in support services. What should that line read then in terms of action? I'd have to go break down the map on that. I mean, I'd have you, to go, you know, if you want it to change or if we're not going to change it, I think that's probably I mean, your budget is 4450 so what have we spent? To the one that Phil gave me. Um, <clears throat> maybe, maybe Christy, 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 is, uh, Christy has the number for it. November, I, don't know, I would say it's a very, if you look at the actual budget on that, Jerry, yeah. being $4,450, yeah. it's a very small item. It really covers me and the deputy, um, oh. and not a whole lot more, so I don't oh. think it's a... So in looking at it, the last four years you've averaged 2500 mm -hmm. and your request 4050 looks heavy well, you're, you're accounting that we uh, we started an honor guard too, right? You're aware of that? You knew that, right? Uh, I may have heard it. But is that well, mentioned you didn't in here? You, I, didn't, I, you didn't mention that. I, I didn't mention it because I, I don't... Well, then it's not as big as you make it, it, it should. It, I mean, there's no mention in the rationale of any honor guard, is there? Yeah, there is. Yeah, there On is. page 14, if you look under uniform allowance, it yeah. lists out a breakdown. Of oh, yeah, there is an honor guard. Yeah. Right yeah. And that's a thousand. Yeah. And then we added, I believe we added the uh, awards because yeah. we want to recognize our officers for the fine jobs that they do. A thousand. If you think that's stuff that we should cut, Jerry. No, I'm just asking about it. I think I, most of the people like I, seeing the honor guard in the parades uh, and seeing the guys get recognized. <laughs> <laughs> but if that's not what you like. <laughs> um, okay. Honor guard, I missed that then. I, 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 I thought, is that new this year? I mean, is that a new We entry? started We started the Honor Guard in uh, November last year. Of uh, 15. Of 14. 14 uh, because I wanted that present upon Chief Sullivan's retirement party. Uh, I had promised him that we were going to get that started at some point, And I wanted to keep my word. And it's been a great hit. Um, the Honor Guard has performed in uh, our Christmas parade. Uh, number of ceremonies. Uh, they were instrumental in dealing with the funeral for Officer Cormier, uh, who passed away tragically from Northampton. And so I understand your concern with it, Jerry, but I think it's no. I'm, I'm not having a problem with it. I did, was it in the 15? Was it in the 15 budget? I don't. I don't know. Well, it wouldn't. It would be under the uniforms. We had a default I, budget. Though. Yeah. Right. Uh, no default budget. I don't know. It, it's it's a thousand, and I don't have a problem with the with the item itself. Moving on to uh, gasoline costs. Uh, I'll talk about yeah, uh, training and recruiting as well, and maybe supplies and expense. But gasoline costs. I'm having a very hard time buying any gasoline costs stipulated in any part of the town budget. Uh, I cannot accept the three dollars or two dollars, three whatever is it, the two fifty four per gallon. I paid two dollars and one cent this morning, and for the last couple of months, I've been between two dollars and two dollars and ten cents a gallon. For the year, we've averaged oh fifteen, we've averaged some like two dollars and thirty five cents or so. And I pay the taxes. I pay the state and the federal taxes, and I'm arriving at two oh one. And you're buying from the state. And supposedly they're exempting you from some tax, <coughs> and you're paying 254. So I don't get it. It needs reconciliation. And my uh, recommendation to the town manager is to buy at the pump until such time as the pump is more expensive than the state, and buy from the state at that point in time. But I can't buy any of these gasoline costs. They're just not in line with the marketplace conditions. 
I had looked on the internet over and over again for this area, Portsmouth, Rochester, Hampton, Massachusetts, and so on. These gasoline costs are completely out of line. And this is not aiming at you, Rich. This is not just dedicated to you with these comments. I just get to sit here and take it. That's Cross right. the board. <laughs> Cross the board. <laughs> Moving on. Training and recruiting, requesting 3797. But in 214, the actual spent was 215. And in year to date, uh, in 214, the actual spent was $215. And year to date, it's 1668 when annualized. Comment. You spent $215 in, in uh, 2014, and in 2015, you spent 1668 when I annualized it from October. And you're asking for almost 4000 3797 Comment, that's all I'm asking for. Well, right. Jerry, as you know, we've done a pretty good job of attracting probably the best law enforcement training you can find that travels the circuit. And because of that, I don't have to spend a lot of money on things such as tuition, the cost of hotels, and travel. Okay? So I think that reflects why we don't spend as much. Okay? You will probably see an increase in that one as I recently traveled to the uh, IACP, which was in October. And I submitted my reimbursement paperwork last week, so you're probably going to see a bump in that spending there, probably about $2,000 worth. <coughs> okay. So, again, if you'd rather I didn't bring in those premier training courses and we send them off somewhere else, I can do that, but I don't think that would be proven well, to I'm the looking at, I'm looking at what you're spending. Basically... Uh, but, Jerry, see, I guess that's where you and I have that philosophical difference when we have this discussion every year yeah. is... I'd love to be able to tell you what the cost of gas is going to be in nine months. We can project, but I don't think anybody in this room is qualified to tell us that. I can project what training costs are going to be, but I don't know what's coming down for mandatory training from the state, from the federal government. You have all kinds of talk with things going on in this country about what they want police officers to do. Um, I can't project those, so i got to have a margin of error there. And if you're going to... That account, entire account, is $3,797. That entire account is $3,797. I, I understand. But I'm just looking at what you spent in 015 and 014, mm -hmm. and it doesn't any come close to that, and I'm just bringing it to the table. Yep. I'm not asking you to do anything with it. I'm just highlighting it because it stuck out as an irregularity to me, and there wasn't enough rationale in the book for me to not mention it. But we've had this discussion before. Right. Well, I don't know about this. The, these yeah, facts yeah. Uh, shouldn't be a surprise to you. Yeah. These are the same things that happened last year, the year before, and the year before that on the Chief But you see, here, here's the problem. We're trying to get the public to buy into this budget. We really are. Mm -hmm. We'd love to have the public buy into this budget. You're, not only your budget, but the town budget. But they have to believe in it. They hear my questions. They hear your answers. Mm -hmm. and this is going to go on now through the evening. Mm -hmm. I'm not being a wise guy here. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this from a zero, bu zero base budget point of view. I don't just look at line items that are above or below what they were last year. I'm looking, does this line item stand? Can it stand on its own legs? And what's the rationale for it? Because we were defaulted last year. When you get defaulted, some line items are double what people ask for. Other line items are significantly less than what people ask for. Terry, how many defaults have we had in the last dozen years? Many. Okay, so last... Many. The last approved budget, to my knowledge, was 013. So it's not shocking. It's not shocking. In 13, the proposed budget was less than the default, correct? Right. Okay. That's why it passed. So people are voting the law. What number. we're trying to do is get them to believe in the budget <coughs> we put forth. I don't believe in it myself. I'm Jerry, sorry. Can I ask you a question? Yes. Do you believe the trend of voting the low number is going to change in March of 16? Do I believe one? <coughs> that the voters, looking at the budget, the bottom line, okay. if it's the proposed is this and the default is this, what do you think they're going to vote? Is that any mystery to anybody in this room or anybody a mystery oh, to I anybody know. watching this proceeding? It's not. That may be. No, it is, Jerry. We, we know that. Chief. But if, if we approach a budget 
properly, and we lean it properly. But Jerry, I don't agree with what you believe is a proper budget. And we have rationale that supports what it is. Maybe we can get the people to believe in it. These gas prices, they're not going to believe two fifty for a gallon. They've been paying between $2 and two ten for two to three months. Jerry, we go to a lot of the same places. We talk to a lot of the same people. You know what I hear from people? They're tired of this. We're talking about a line item for $3,797. In this account. In this account. Can I? In this account. Take it throughout the town. I know, but Jerry, we're talking about this account, and we've been going on about this account for almost 10 minutes now. That's why last year, not me. This, I, this, I moved from it. This I, meeting took ten, uh, three hours last year because we got hung up on these three, oh, two and three and four thousand dollar items. You take tw ten and twenty of them, you got yourself a pretty good fistful of money. Okay, and I'll go back to what I told you last year. I maybe you don't intend it that way. That sounds like an awful lot, like a shot that like I'm doing something I should be doing. And I, I, I'll tell you right now, I resent the fact that you say it the way you do. I don't, I don't think you mean it that way, Jerry. But here's the other problem that other people pick up on. I talk to you individually alone at a coffee or something like that. You're a nice guy. We might disagree, but we don't have a conversation like this. When these TV cameras are on, boy, does it get more dramatic. No. Well, and that's what people is, are talking. And Jerry. This is business. If you want to talk about what people are talking about, this they're talking right. about the drama. This is business. Or the fence, cup of coffee, glass <clears throat> of beer, whatever. Madam Chair, Madam Chair, right. Madam Chair, Madam Chair point of this order here. Dramatic. Can we do a little bit less uh, yeah. speculation on what other people are saying and a little bit more on dealing with the facts? Yeah, I'd love that. Is there a specific yeah, question a little that courage. we can address? <laughs> there isn't. I'm just saying that the right. gasoline costs are over. He can take his position and so can Fred. All right. Training and recruiting is over and he can take a position and same as Fred, give him margin for, for whatever, okay? And the supplies and expense are a couple of K higher. He talked about that. And we talked about the uniform allowance. So I'm done with administration. Okay, thank you. Michael? Yes, uh, mm, you brought up a couple of good points, uh, Rick, about, uh, Nick, about the uh, uh, website. Who decides, I think this question was asked earlier, but I'll try to focus a little more precisely. Who decides what's on the police department's website? And do you have a policy to govern what's on there in case? Michael, this is po a policy mm. question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move the discussion. Thank you. Thank okay. you. I have a question. Madam. Call me on uh, your own. I don't mind answering that question okay. on a private phone call because I'd answer that question to any citizen. Okay, thank I'm you. Chair, point of order. The policy question was only a matter of how the money is being spent in underneath a potential policy. He wasn't challenging the policy, but merely seeking an understanding of the policy upon I which the money is being spent. Challenging I the believe policy. that was a valid question to be answered. I believe Tim? the chief wants to answer it. Stephen. Go ahead. Question, observation under uniform allowance I notice on your it says um, emblems and badges 300 patches at 350 each I'm looking at page 14 yep and as an observation I'm looking at your uniform and I notice that you don't have a a metal badge anymore yes I do <laughs> oh well I, I, <laughs> I decided I'd want to be comfortable tonight I hope <laughs> you, you don't have to prove it to that, that's a <laughs> oh okay but I notice you have the patch both of you are wearing a patch and I thought perhaps yep. it's you know, a, a, a patch is a lot cheaper than a badge, and I. But we, keep in mind, we are required by state law um, to have a to, badge. To have a badge mm -hmm. and a name tag on the on your uh, most outer garment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. The yeah. embroidered badges are sufficient; it meets the uh, constitutional test, so we're okay with that. So, what you see the deputy and I wearing, because we're in admin, we wear the exterior vest carrier. But my first action as chief is I directed that anybody in uniform in a patrol function would wear a vest. Now, we're admin, we're not patrol, but I thought the best thing for us to do was set the example. So anytime you see me driving around town in a uniform, I have that vest on, as does the deputy and the two lieutenants, just to set the example. Okay. But that is the badges. We do have that. So we're not changing over just to the embroidered badges. We are going to continue with the metal badges traditionally because I, I just think it's appropriate. Yeah, the badge is real copper. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, they are not. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay. Do I have any more questions from the floor? Sonny? Yeah, uh, I want to come at this a little different. Uh, I don't have any quarrel with the budget items. What I'm concerned about is you spend a lot of your police activity on the beach. The beach belongs to the state. How much, how many state police come out in the summer? I understand you use UNH 
Well, on, based upon New Hampshire law, <coughs> New Hampshire State Police do not have jurisdiction in a town that has a population of 3,000 more unless they are invited in by the local chief of police or ordered in by the attorney general. In this circumstance, um, I give the state police an open invitation to come into town and patrol and assist us. They do offer us uh, on the weekends, on Friday nights and Saturday nights primarily, and other special events when I need them. Uh, anywhere in the vicinity of six to a dozen troopers, depending on the 4th of July, we usually get uh, a dozen troopers if they can get them. Um, additionally, the weekends and special events and some of the fireworks shoots, if we're running short for some reason, uh, they keep, a, uh, they keep a, an amount of money set aside in their budget to help us in the preseason before we start our season. So we have a great relationship with the state police. I speak with the colonel uh, just about every week. I wasn't assuming anything. To, yep. What I was simply trying to get at is state owns the beach. State gets the revenues from parking meters. State wants the town to maintain the sidewalks on the, on the east side. Mm -hmm. You know, it's costing the... I'm trying to get a number of what it's actually costing the town to to do the police work on the beach? I can't give you an exact cost. No, what I, I can understand. do for you is, is on the yeah. uh, Selectman Bean's uh, request in the direction of the board at the time, we started adding site areas into our data system so we can break down. When I give my report to the Selectman uh, quarterly, I also produce a document for them to look at the number of calls for service at different state sites, starting with the liquor stores out on 95, right down to the, each of the bathhouses, any of the state properties, there are specific sites now in our system that if we get a call for disorderly conduct on the beach near the band shell, yeah, you're gonna respond, that's the site right? and it'll register the site. So we keep that data and I'd be more than happy to provide that to you if you'd like to look at it. It's not going to give you a cost, but it's going to give you calls for service. The cost is difficult because then I'd have to break down, was it a part-time officer at this pay rate, a full-time officer working overtime? It's a substantial amount of money, yes. We do we do That's spend a lot of time because of the beach. Yeah, what I was suggesting, if you could put a number to it, we could pursue the state because... That's been tried. Um, yeah. I think what you're going to see in that area, I know this is kind of drifting off, but just to give you an update, Selectman so Bean and a number of the political leaders in town have pursued that. Um, I think they're looking at other avenues, like trying to get an enabling legislation to allow us to put a local tax on some of the things to try to help offset the cost of the municipality. That's really... In my opinion, the only way that's going to happen because the state, yeah, it's a cash cow down there for them, and, and they know it. And under state law, Dredd owns all the state parks, and they keep the keys. <coughs> as far as rooms and meals, it, it, it's a formula based upon base population of the community. So we're comparable to Exeter. We get the same check as Exeter gets, yet we probably have five times the number of liquor establishments, establishments and probably ten times the number of hotel rooms. So, yeah, there is a, there's a disparity there. But that's not something that you're going to change by having the state police come in because, hey, first of all, it's the responsibility of the Hampton Police Department, and I will not relinquish it as chief of police. Yeah, no, I don't no. mind uh, having them come in to assist us with the Rockingham Sheriff's Department. I have mutual aid with the University of New Hampshire coming in to help us. So as far as the efficiency of their operation, it works very well with the officers that work in that community every day. When the troopers come down, they're great. But a lot of them are from all different parts of the state, so they don't have the connection to the community we do. They augment us, they help us, and they're great. But it's not their mission to police Hampton Beach, it's the Hampton Police Departments, in my opinion. Michael? I'm going to follow up on a question that was asked earlier. When you buy, fill up your cars with ga state gasoline, where do you fill them up? Uh, we had two places we could. There's a state shed out there off of uh, Liberty Lane. Okay. Okay, that it connects to Route 95, and that's where all the state plow trucks, the state troopers, they, they fuel up, and a lot of communities use that. Mm -hmm. That's going to become a very busy gas point because they are closing the one in Northampton who was off of South Road. We just got notified that should be closing up, I think, in this week uh, due to the type of tank system. They have to shut it down envi for environmental reasons. No, I was wondering how, how you, where you got the gas and where they was available. Mm -hmm. That leads to another question. Have you used... Do you ever buy, do any of your vehicles ever get filled up with the local gas station? We buy? did that several years ago when we had the same issue that Jerry was describing where the, the gas is cheaper. Mm -hmm. The problem you have with that, and we're, we're actually looking at that, is now you have to do a lot of paperwork to get that tax exemption. Mm -hmm. because we want to get, if we're going to do that, then we want to maximize it. Mm -hmm. 
we're looking at a system where we wouldn't have to do the paperwork ourselves. There's a third party kind of credit card deal that we could use at our local gas stations, and we're trying to work that out as we speak. Now, I know there's uh, extra paperwork because living on the farm, farmers were mm -hmm. exempt from that, uh, taxes too, and we had to do that every year about right. like doing taxes. But I didn't know where you filled up. That's my question, basically. Yeah. Thank, thank you very much. Is anybody else? Is the rate currently 264? That you're paying at the pump right now? I'd have to look at my most recent okay. bill. I'd have to look I, guess at. I think it's in that ballpark. Yeah, and, and I guess many have questioned the gas looking at, you know, 201 at the pump, realizing there's 20 odd cents built in there for taxes. So when you take 264, and, you and I don't want to speak for the manager, but I know there have been discussions. I've had discussions with the assistant manager with, and all the other department heads going in that direction as an alternative. It's just one of these things we have to pay attention to it, that when the prices do come back up, and they will, when do we well, switch back to the state? The question would be, if you were buying at the pump and going through all the paperwork or going through mm -hmm. the credit card system yep. that you're describing, are we penalized if we then decide to go back to... State no, line. what we would do is, my understanding is this, we would maintain our accounts with New Hampshire DOT. Uh -huh. That's who runs the gas pumps. We'd maintain that. But when the gas prices dip as low as they are right now, right. we'd have that alternative through this system we're looking at to hit any one of our, our, our gas stations here in, okay. uh, in town and utilize that and the paperwork uh, that becomes very cumbersome for finance and for the department heads to manage yeah. would be taken care of by that company. But with 30,000 gallons in one account alone, right now you would be saving about 85 cents a gallon. So No, we're aware of it. That's why we're working on it. I mean, we're literally, I was discussing this last week with the assistant town manager. We're looking at it, trying rather, to make it happen. Rather than pay the, the oil and gas companies, I would much rather see the revenue go to buying something that the department needs. Couldn't agree with you more. <laughs> that's, that? where, that's where we're going with yep. the questions, and we realize that doing that, I'm glad to hear about the credit card system. <coughs> doing that does involve <coughs> more work, but I would think that when it comes to funding, it, it would definitely ben be beneficial to have that go in a different direction productively instead of just, again, to the oil companies. What, what tax? Excuse me, the, Jerry. Yeah, I'm Thank looking you. to see what tax gets exempted from them. I don't know, state or federal or both. It's, fe it's um. Is it state? Both. 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 Mm -hmm. So it's about 40 cents. Yeah, it's, cons point. it's considerable. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, just a couple of questions. Kind of, I don't want to get back into the training, but I have to. Um, and the question lies not so much in the $3,700. I see that you've broken it down within the different areas. So that on page, and I don't want to jump ahead to the sections, but I think. It's an overall question. On page 15, it's 37.97. On mm -hmm. page oh, 17, it's 3,000. On page um, 20, it's there's another 3,000, and then there's um, training and recruitment for 22,000. Oh, so it's it's one of those things that we discussed. Um, one of the things we're looking at is I. If you look at fuel accounts, I have an admin right fuel account. I have a detectives. Gentlemen. Thank you. I have an admin fuel account. I have a uh, crime control and investigations fuel <coughs> account, traffic control fuel account. I'm talking about training. I know, but I'm just doing a right. comparison. No, I see where so you've broken it The direction it down. I think we're going is, is we're going to consolidate some of these accounts in the future mm -hmm. to just make it easier. I don't really think operationally for me it helps me or... Excuse me. Whenever you're ready. Michael, you? we can hear you all the way over here, please. Okay. Sorry. I think in... The fuel is an example. I don't think it really benefits me as the department head, and maybe you folks differ as the budget committee, to break it up into three separate accounts. What I'd like to move towards is putting it in one account for the Hampton Police Department. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I don't think it really, it doesn't benefit me at all I don't as think a department it, I, head. Yeah, I don't think it benefits And if it does benefit you guys, and maybe, you know, we got to have further discussions on how we consolidate things. And I want to, you know, I, I've been in the admin world for a lot of years, and the number one thing that bogs down bureaucracy is too much paperwork. We need to simplify and consolidate things the best we can so we can move through the, these things better because, you know, we, we spent a lot of time talking about training. We're going to talk about it again 
in two other sections. Exactly. <laughs> and to Jerry's point, when you see it broken out in different areas, yeah. and that's where we look nitpicky, but we're actually... No, I get why you're curious. You know, and to me, if, it's like, if we're saying, okay, we're 500 a little over yeah. here and another 500 a little over here again, maybe it's money that you don't totally need a little bit as much in these accounts when you put them all together mm -hmm. that maybe some other department desperately needs mm -hmm. and two thousand dollars might not ma spread out over half a dozen lines no. might not make a big difference to you but if you take a small budget say like the cemetery two thousand dollars makes a huge difference to them and that's our job here yep. so we do get nitpicky in, in, in bursts of a budget that's multi-million dollars when now we're into the three the big three yours fire and dpw it does look like we're picking but you guys can just bear in mind we we have to pick because there are other areas of the budget that are not as grand yeah. and the percentages um in those budgets can look very high in a very small number of dollars and sometimes if we can move things around we can take care of things in a different way so. I, I think as you see as we move forward, there are areas where I did that, but I tend to focus on the bigger numbers where I could get you more, you know, coming in, trying to come to that number as close as I could to last year's budget. Included in that, adding a parking enforcement group, raises and all that, coming at, a, what is it, 0.83% over last year's budget, I, I think we did a pretty good job working on that. <clears throat> and I don't mean to keep beating it up, it's just, you know, no, you're thirty seven hundred. You're our new chief. Yep. Um and this is your first full round of budgeting and um your your own unique style of management. We're going to decide our budget. What do you mean by unique? <laughs> Everybody's <laughs> unique. Your own style. She means it's absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Thank you. Michael. I knew I'd get your vote. Unique problems. means <laughs> one of a kind, but you, you have your own style of, uh, and will have your own style going forward. It's changing daily for you. I can't think of any area that's as much under pressure and has so much being thrown at it right now as police departments, not only here, but around the country. Uh, well, well, and the storm. <laughs> fortunately, we have a police force that is developed for a, a town of 15,000, but really can hun handle 100,000 on the beach in any given day. And I'm thankful for that. And you need things that we don't need in, in towns that are only 15,000. And we always have to be mindful. So if we are nipping at the heels um, and fine tuning, a lot of times that ends up in a good way for both you and other departments. So okay. That being said, I will be quiet on this section and move on to the next one. Crime control and investigation. Okay. I certainly have a few questions there, but let me just uh, give All the right. summary first on the crime control. Subtotal on crime control from the board says $491,011, and that is a 12.37% increase. The majority of that, um, I believe you're going to find is I did make some adjustments in assignments within the department structure. Uh, I highlighted uh, earlier in the year that uh, for the first time the Hampton Police Department has assigned a uh, member of the department to a federal drug enforcement task force full time. Uh, we got that going, uh, began the negotiations right about the same time uh, when I became chief. Uh, met with the special agent in charge for the state of New Hampshire with the DEA. Uh, we had op opportunities for a couple of different things. They actually, because we were willing to participate, created a position on an existing task force that is in a different direction, but the detective works now closer to Hampton. Um, and that's part of that. As this detective went off to work on this task force, I did not want to leave the detective's office is shorthanded. So I made the decision to shift a patrol position into the detective position. So that's primarily what that increase that you're seeing. You should see an increasing, uh, corresponding decrease in the patrol section because I reduced the number of patrolmen. Just to highlight the benefit to that, we've had those, obviously we've all heard about the, uh, the heroin epidemic and the, the problems and the tragedies we're, we're dealing with. 
We have made some recent arrests that have been highlighted in the press. I won't get into too many specifics. At least one of those arrests we wouldn't have been able to facilitate if it was not for our participation in that task force. What that gives us also is we go to the top of the pile when there's a problem in the area and I need people to come in and work in a plainclothes capacity or undercover that I don't have within the Hampton Police Department. Again, we, we're a police department in a town of 15,000 most of the year, and then it explodes. Mm -hmm. And we augment with our special officers, but I don't really get to augment that much in my investigative area because you need a, a level of expertise. By being part of this task force, my detective can bring to bear 13 to 14 experienced drug investigators to help us in this town with this area, and that did occur during one of these investigations that resulted in a pretty high profile arrest. Mm -hmm. So while we're spending money a little bit more because we moved the somebody to the detective, it's already paid its dividends within the first year, in my opinion. But I think most of that increase you're seeing is due to that. Because correspondingly, this is going to be an increase in the overtime, an increase in the holiday pay, tuition, mm -hmm. in that section of the budget. Questions? I'm going to go with Scott first, no. then Jerry, sure. then Tim. Um, in then that Nick. section, uh, Chief, the, the overtime, um, it, it's, it was 16651 through October mm -hmm. of this year. Um, which, uh, could you just give me the line number where you're referring yeah, to? Yeah. Um, 1400 yeah. Overtime wages? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, 1400 Okay. Um, so annualized, that's, you know, 19900 Um You're requesting 34000 and that's that's in line with your prior years, but, I mean, this year is really, really good. I didn't know... Um, <laughs> As far as we didn't spend as much? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I'll give you the example of that one. <laughs> I have one detective who's a part-time part of the ICAC task force. I have another detective that's full-time with the DEA task force. <coughs> DEA, Justice Department, and the ICAC, which is Homeland Security, give me a certain dollar number because we participate and cover my overtime. Okay. So they don't pay my salary but they do pay a certain portion of overtime. So you'll see probably in the area of, between the two of them over the course of a year, $34,000 in overtime costs that get reimbursed to the town of Hampton because we participate. So that's some of the savings you're seeing. And, and we wouldn't have that next year or we would not to the extent that we had it this year? I can't guarantee that. Okay. I have to look at these things as, as we move forward with the budget process it's always one of these things. I love participating in these regional issues because I look at these things while it impacts the town and I'm the chief in Hampton. The best way to approach some of these things is regionally through task force. But depending on where the budget goes and what happens with the federal budget or the state budget, we would delay getting our officer on the DEA task force because of federal budget issues. It took us three more months than we anticipated. You're supposed to be off three months prior. Yeah. But because of their budget issues, so I can't guarantee that we're going to get that 30, roughly 34000 overtime back. The five-year average is $32,000, nice. and, and you're asking for thirty four. It's reasonable what you're yep. asking for. I just... Why the anomaly? Yeah. Yeah. It was... But I mean, his last four years... I think if we... If nothing happens, nothing out of, you know, extraordinary happens, you're probably going to see a significant saving in that count next year, and you're going to ask me that question, but yeah. that's going to be the answer is why, because I now have two detectives... Yeah. Now, the one that's with the HSI group, for a long time we weren't getting the reimbursement. It, it, it was minimal money, but now they stepped up because they, this particular person is so valuable to them that we're getting more money from them, and they're asking us to do more with him, which I'm okay with as long as there's that trade-off, yeah. which is occurring. Small amount, but it's under the rental and leases, that uh, 4400 um, You're... Um it's it's four hundred and seventy five dollars uh, uh, for the two thousand and fifteen annualized number, and you're requesting twenty two sixty eight. There's just there's not a lot of detail in the budget write up. It's it's uh, pagers and detective phones. I guess that's the um, it, it it's a that two thousand two sixty eight is a is is a large increase over the last five years. Um, yeah, the last four years have been four hundred and thirty bucks on the average. Oh, okay. Rentals and leases, yep. and that's, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong call. 4,400 account. Yeah. Yeah. The explanation is pages slash detectives phones. So, uh, 
just <coughs> okay and our actual uh, you had a 396 through October I'm going to have to look at the billing on that to find out whether we get a bigger bill. Some of this stuff comes in at the end of the year. We did add a detective, um, so there should be more in there. If I, if I go to like 2011 of 475. Kind of phones, we done it's, uh, phones. It's part of NCID. Oh, we transferred it. Deputy's yeah. correct. We didn't have phones with all of our detectives. Uh, we did that this year, and we upgraded the phone, so that probably explains some of the increase that I'm requesting on the phones from detectives. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jerry. I have a question. This is not a uh, comment on the budget being up or down, but uniform pay for detectives, is, are they in plain clothes? This is uh, uniform pay. Yes. Are they in plain, so what we're doing is replacing their suits or? No, it's a contractual obligation, Jerry. Ah. Because they are still, even though they're in a detective position. They're in plain clothes. Um, depends what's going on. Um, okay. A lot of them work, will come in and work in uniform, and I do require that every detective that's working in, other than a guy that's in task force, might have a beard and all that, uh, that they have to have a uniform ready that in a case where I need additional people in uniform that they're capable of doing that. Gotcha. And they're subject to the same agreement as well. <coughs> That's what I couldn't figure yep. I, I couldn't uh, imagine a detective being in a uniform, you know, or at least my perception. But <laughs> No, I get it. But again, it goes back to we're a little town of 15,000, yeah. but we have detectives to handle sometimes up to 100,000. So I have to be able to use them uh, in su uniform. The supplies and, thank you. The supplies and expense here, uh, 2015 to date annualized is, 4,800. Mm. The last four years average is 4,000. You're now asking for 69.75. A 44% increase over 215 annualized. Okay, rate. my actual right now is 4,032 on that account. Yeah. I guess so. so I'll well exceed the 5,000 before the end of the year. You're asking for 69.72. And that became. <clears throat> yeah, 4,032. Okay, we added some uh, professional memberships because of the computer issues. National Crime Investigators Association memberships for each of the detectives. We had to increase. I think one of the big things is the general specialized video enhancement and duplication. fees that were paid for by uh, the crime line there were some fees that the crime line had paid for oh okay that's correct and um, the deputy was pointing out there was a top of my head I can't remember which fee it was but the crime line paid for a fee for us on one of our memberships I believe and that was a one-time donation, so that's not going to be there next year for us. It could be, but, you know, with the crime line, they move around to different yeah. things for you. So I don't anticipate it's going to be the so same next year. You know, the uh, budget was five grand this year. Mm -hmm. So that was my obligation. Okay. Looks like you're going to... Well, right now, anyway, it looks like you're going to need five grand. Uh, I would suspect I'm probably going to go a little bit over on that, Jerry, but not we'll positive. To, we'll have to see November and December, yep. I guess. Okay. And, of course, gasoline, my favorite comment. Uh, you <laughs> oh, know we can. We can nothing further that. to add, Jerry. We have it memorized. Are, uh, you know where I am on that. All right. Thank you, Jerry. I'm done. Nick? Um, mine is more of a clarification explanation, if you will. Yep. Um, court costs, it shows up three times, and I understand why, crime control investigations, and then again later on. Um, do, and, and like I said, clarification just for me, do, are, are the people who are represented in court, do they get paid a separate rate, or what is the um, court wages, what does that cover? Well, when we look at court wages for, um, detectives 
we only have $100 in there. Yeah. Okay. Now, the reason being is detectives primarily work Monday through Friday, so when there's court in session, they're already working. They're already working. They do most of our superior court work. If somebody is indicted, mm -hmm. the detectives present the indictments to the grand jury. Okay. They do all our grand jury work. In generally speaking, most of the stuff that goes to the superior court is usually a detective in a criminal investigation. Patrol gets up there once in a while with the bad accidents and stuff like that, but primarily our folks that are up in Brentwood at the Superior Court of the detectives, and it's during their normal business hours, so we don't put a whole lot in there. Okay. Uh, as far as court wages for the other sections, just to go over it really quick, is part-time officers, full-time officers, when they go over to the 10th Circuit in Seabrook, we pay them, they sign in, we get a... Uh, I think the going rate now for an officer's appearance in court is, I want to say, Christy, is it $30? It is. It's $30. So they sign in. We will get a check from the state for $30 for the officer's appearance on a given day. Okay. The officer, by contract, actually gets paid by the town, and they turn the check over to the town. The $30 check from the court comes to the town, and we pay the officer due to the contract, I think, it's three hours, three hours, and it's generally at an overtime rate if it's a full-time officer, if he's not already working. Okay. So that's what that money accounts for. Okay. Thank you. All right. Sandy? Good evening. Good evening. Nice to see you guys. Nice to see you. I haven't seen you in a while. No, it's, been, it's been a bit. Um, can you talk to me about the um, vehicle replacement on page 20? You've got... Uh, New police cars, three marked, one unmarked. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Uh, no, I think, I think you're jumping ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah next section. Hang on. Yeah. We're still on we'll crime investigations. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. We're, we're still on crime control and investigations. <coughs> I think vehicle replacement comes up in traffic control and patrol, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, while we're there, do we have any other questions on crime? Yes. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll I'll wait till. Thank you, Sandy. In the proper place. Right. Vehicle maintenance, you're up 33 um, percent. Were we planning on any of these cruises to replace whatever the big problem is here? I'm sorry. Can you say that again, bro? Um. You're up 33 percent. Um. Is are any of these cruises that you're looking to purchase gonna replace? I don't know what the problem is with the vehicles. It will be up. What in crime? What line are you yes. on? What, what vehicle line maintenance? Are you on? I'm on 6600. Yeah. Vehicle maintenance. Yeah. Okay. So is the budget was five thousand. It's flat. Uh. But if you go back. Well, if you go back to 2014. Vehicle maintenance. 2014, it was 1649. Then it went up to five thousand. We've already replaced all the vehicles there. And I think, well, yeah, and then it was 740, yeah. and now it's back up to 5,000. Well, well, it was 5,000. It was 5,000 uh, last year. Yeah. And a lot of times that has to, I'm not going to talk for you, but a lot of times that has to do at where we are in the fleet on leases or new purchases, and they start to age out, and they need a little bit more help. Right. They've aged out, but most of the, I believe all of our cruises, I think I've got them all replaced this year. CID, our okay. detectives cars, so they're all replaced. Again, it's one of those things, Brian, it's with the newer cars, as you know, we do a lot of work with public works right now mm -hmm. on our fleet, but there are those things that they can't do there. And with the modular builds of these new cars, I have one major problem with a transmission or something like that, Great. it's going to chew that up pretty quick. Okay, that's all I was asking for is that and I hate to even bring this up because I have been, been such a big supporter of this, but uh, the Mountain Patrol. Okay. What section? Um, you're on, I'm on 8200. Okay. I look back through the years, and I don't see where we've spent more than 25000 However, we're at 33511 and I know it's been requested in the past, mm -hmm. but it was never spent. Okay. Um, you still only spent, well, okay. I don't have December, but 
you're only about 25,000 for this year. Uh, let me double check that one second. And that's a rough. So we're at, as of October 31st, we're at 26,615, or roughly 80%. Okay. With two months to go. Yeah, 319 okay. annualized. So, 319, you said annualized? Okay. So we're going to come in pretty close to it. Uh, you got to also add in the factor that what that covers is stable expenses, farrier care of the horse's hooves, medical expenses, trainer expense, and insurance premium to cover loss of horses and equipment. Okay. So horses, I don't know what you know about them. I used to have them. Yeah, um, I did too. They can get expensive real quick. You got a great horse, he's working along, and all of a sudden he starts foundering or he has colic, and boom. Now we've been very lucky, uh, or fortunate I should say, with the barn we use in Gailey Stables over in Hampton Falls. Uh, the professional horse people, they take great care of our horses, and we haven't had any issues. But the two horses, I believe, are both in that proximity of 10 years old, okay, or even a little bit older. And as they get older, they're going to wind up having more problems. That's just the way it is. Um, Spending as much We do have, as uh, do just now. on a side, we do have uh, that the uh, Mounted Police group uh, that supports us on the side. Uh, so some of the extra expenses, if they were to occur, they do have a fund that I could dip into and request money from them from a uh, nonprofit organization that supports us. So they keep a fund for us, too, if we had a, an extreme care issue with a horse or, God forbid, we had to replace a horse. We'd have that ability to do that. And I guess I'm going the roundabout way. The truck's not involved in this, right? No, it is not. The, the truck has been withdrawn as a warrant article that doesn't exist. We're, we're going to get by the best we can for the year. Okay. Thank you very much. Yep. Okay, before we move on to the next section, I've got general question maybe for all sections. Last year, there was a punch list of of items I think uniforms fell under the category the badges did mm -hmm. that it was recommended if there was money left at the end of the year out of the 2014 budget that the request would be put in and the purchases be made from that money rather than have them go into the un um, designated fund and the reserves so was that ever done isn't that what we were talking about, that encumbrance for the uniforms? Is that the encumbrance that That encumbrance over? covered uh, the new officers coming in. I believe we had seven new officers or eight new officers come in. Okay. And we, we equipped them, uh, a lot of that, with the encumbrance money. Okay. So my question would be, Christy, if we back that out to the right spot because for committees that come after us, that will create... <coughs> A question on that line and what we actually needed and what we spent and th the thought of the encumbrance will be lost I'm sure it would that's what happens from year to year and it'll also keep a spike um, from occurring when you get around to doing the default budget on that particular line we could see it broken out differently and then the second question I would have along the same vein um, Chief, is do you have a punch list of items um, from this budget that possibly we could do again if we do have... You're talking about the current 15 budget? Mm -hmm. Current 15. Mm -hmm. We know we get to the end of the year. Um, if we have money left from this budget for things that we could exercise and have you attain... That you I put actually had that discussion with the assistant town manager to start formulating my plan for that. So I will be looking at that. As we move forward, we didn't think there was going to be a whole lot left over that was getting tight projection-wise, and we've kind of been holding up on the spending. Okay. And so I really hadn't... It was a tough year. I, I and and it's so based on that, I really, until this, till last week, that wasn't even a thought in my head that we were going to be have any availability to do that. Um, so there is a possibility of that happening, um, but I have to really sit down and look at the priorities of okay. what we can get off of next year's budget. I know we have new members here, so I can't speak for everyone, but I do know, as you recall last year, that you got strong support from this committee for doing just that. And it, it worked, you know, for your advantage there. And hopefully if there's a possibility of doing that again. The only thing <clears throat> I would ask is that as we draw down and into January, 
if there is a list before our final review that is submitted that you could let us know because that would have to go in before the well, 31st. What we need, Madam Chairman, is the December POs. Right. We'll know what they placed and the, the uh, budget itself should be decadent downward mm -hmm. if they went off and bought stuff exactly. in accordance with a line item here that got budgeted for for 016. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need the December or November, December purchase orders to place so that we can scrutinize them accordingly. Okay. Thank as you. As soon as we get to that, I'm sure we'll share that information. Well, I just, rather than pile it on all at the end, just. If I can get it now as opposed to next year, I'm all in favor. Kind of ask it. <laughs> right. yeah. Exactly. And it, I think it, it, it works out to everybody's benefit sometimes. That's all I wanted to add to that section. All questions satisfied here on crime control. We move on to the next section. Traffic control and patrol. Sandy, I'm going to let you chime in with that oh, one. Oh, nice. Thank you. <laughs> um, just going to give the uh, summary, if we could, for traffic control and patrol. Down by 1.4 seconds. Yeah, we're at four. 491.11. No, wait a minute. Yeah. Pardon me. Wrong way. Mm -hmm. 2,067,015. We're down 1.46% in the sub -total. Okay. So. You got the ball. <laughs> so, um, again, good evening. Good evening. Um, could you talk about the new police cars, the three marked and the one unmarked? And um, you've got it under vehicle replacement. So I'm wondering, how old are the old ones that you're replacing? See, it's not so much the age, it's the mileage, what we look at. And, and the thing you got to remember about, um, particularly the marked units, I think anybody that knows anything about cars will tell you the more people that drive a vehicle, the more wear and tear there's going to be on it. So a car with 100,000 miles that you drove and only you drove is different than a cruiser with 100,000 miles. It's pretty beat up. It, it's, it's ready to be moved on. And I don't really like having cruisers out in the patrol fleet beyond 100,000 miles because we do have to drive a little bit faster than the general public and we have different responsibilities in how we have to respond. So if I can get rid of a car around 100,000 miles or put it in the back line as a detail car or use it for something else, that's what I try to do. So it's more a mileage issue. The average car that we get rid of, I think, is roughly about three years old on average. When we get rid of a car, it's but, around three years old. That's been used as a primary patrol vehicle. And, but your mileage is up to 100,000. Yeah, let me uh, give you an example. I don't, did you guys get a um, yeah, the sure rolling the stock numbers? Yeah, sure yeah. Yeah. We did. It's The date on the rolling stock list is 9-25-2014. I can give you, I, I instructed the lieutenant to provide that for me today for another reason, so we got an update. He did an updated one. But if you look at, um, let's see, it's a good car, a patrol vehicle. Okay. Um, yeah. 2000. I can't sure. One of the Crown Vicks is a 2011. It's got 90,000 miles on it. Um, what was it? How many? 90,000. So it's a 2011. And then if we go to. The ones, you're, the ones you're replacing? Yeah. Unit 3. 307 yeah. is a 2014 Ford Explorer, which is the new SUV style you see us driving. Yeah, right. And that vehicle has 81,323. Wow. Okay. These are double what they were. 214. Yeah. Now, not to, not to now, keep in mind the 14's a, a misnomer because we have a 2016 in stock. Yeah. Okay, because you get those with the way the manufacturers are, as you know. So the 14 probably came into our inventory actually in 13. 13, right. yeah. Okay. Not to be a wise guy, but yeah. are, the, are, the, are those better on gas? Actually, they are better. Uh, they're equivalent to the Suzanne. We looked at um, a number of vehicles when we Ford stopped making the Crown Vic right. yeah. um, because it wouldn't meet the 2014 standards for fuel efficiency. Right. So they went to the Taurus as their primary uh, cruiser package, and then there were a lot of complaints from law enforcement because... The cars were too small for the officers, but more important, they were too small for the, the people we'd be transporting in the back. Mm -hmm. 
So they came up with a Explorer, but it's a, what they call a police interceptor package. It's a little beefed up suspension, beefed up electrical system for all the stuff we put in there. A little lower to the ground, a little wider wheelbase uh, because of the way we drive. Um, but the fuel efficiency is comparable to the Taurus, and so is the price. So in the, in the, it gives you the option of all-wheel drive, which we took, which for our environment, I'm not worried about going fast. I don't want my people going fast unless we absolutely have to. I want them getting there safely. And considering the environment we work in, it's been a great asset to the department to have those because in the snow and the wet weather and what we deal with down on the boulevard, it was the right choice. I like them. They don't look, when they're coming at you, yeah. you don't know it's a cruiser. Right. That'll change over Curious time like because that. when the Crown Vicks, the new Crown Vicks came out, people didn't recognize them either, but over time they got used to them. Yeah. State Police drives the Dodges. Everybody knows what those are. And mm -hmm. this has become really the standard package most law enforcement agencies in, in New Hampshire have gone to. Yeah. Very few. The ones that did go to something else all wish they had gone to, yeah. gone to the police interceptor yeah. package. And do you have the age and the mileage on the other two? What other? What specific two do you want? Well, we're, you're changing three mark to one unmarked car? Yeah. I'm not saying those are the ones I'm changing. I'm just giving you an example of mileage. Yeah. Okay. Oh, we won't make that decision until later in the year because it's not always mileage either. You might get ones that are dinged up or we get a transmission slipping. So that's one, you know, to save the cost, we're going to change out. So I won't make that decision until after town meeting or which ones I'm transferring out. Those decisions don't get made until later on. Okay. How many cruises do we have overall? Uh, well, that would be subject to being changed out if we were on a program of, say, we have ten and we do two a year. I'm just well. The goal we the goal we have is to try to change out three a year because that has been what we see the life expectancy of three years based on the fleet that we use to transfer three of the um, the marked units out. Mm -hmm. Now the unmarked units are different because they don't put the mileage on um, my vehicle the deputies and the detective vehicles, they don't put the mileage on and it's a limited number of drivers, so those don't get changed out as frequently. The detective cars that we just got rid of this year, we had in our fleet for almost eight years. Mm -hmm. we, we took good care of them. The problem we run into is we've had, in my career in Hampton PD, we've had at least three vehicles that were in great shape. One of them was mine that I was driving as a take-home cruiser, but because of the salt air environment, the frames were on it. Mm. And that's why I was so worried about the, the mounted truck. Yeah. I want to get ahead of that before that happens to this one because it's going to happen. Um, we used to have an old expedition that was the lieutenant's vehicle. thing was in great running condition. Mm -hmm. Frame rusted and you can't, you can't weld the frame like that and put it out in service, so we had to get rid of it. Right. So those administrative and detective cars last a lot longer than the patrol cars do. Mm -hmm. Patrol cars, about three years. Admin cars, you, you could get eight, nine years out of them. Now, does the warranty cover the car for the three years? I wouldn't think so if it's 36,000 miles for three years. No, nah, because it's similar. I don't think we get any better uh, warranty than you would get as a citizen going and buying a car. So 60,000 miles? Yeah, if it's that, and we, yeah. we chew that up pretty quick. Okay. So. I'm just trying to see where the seesaw ends on the repairs versus where we are. I'm all for changing them out at designated intervals because after a while then you have everything on keel. And again we get to that hundred thousand mark I don't want a guy responding to a bad accident or a domestic with a car with a hundred thousand miles on it mm -hmm. especially with police hundred thousand miles it's different mm -hmm. um, so we try to keep these uh, our guys in safe vehicles so they can respond appropriately absolutely where they've made changes to the car yeah. too that might not be covered yeah. Michael yeah you I know for years the police the patrol cars you always left them running so you could jump right back in and take off if you had to. You still do that? Yes, we do have security devices in them though. You can't just even if the car is running, you can't jump in and drop it in the drive. You'd have to know how to release it. I mean, I'm not worried about somebody else taking it. I just thought you kept it so you could get respond quickly to the next situation. Well, no, it's not so much that, Michael. The other problem we have is, you know, in the colder weather, guy comes into the PD. Mm. You're right. He might come in to do a to report or something like that. And all of a sudden, you're in there for an hour or two hours dealing with somebody. You come back out, and the car's frost covered. Now, if we can, we pull them into the Sally Port. If they're obviously dealing with a prisoner, it's safe in the environment. But we don't always have that situation. When they can, they do, so they can turn the car off. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times, we can't do that. When we're out on the street, 
So we do. I do worry about somebody taking a car or taking equipment out of it. Mm -hmm. So we do have the security devices in the vehicles. You can't just jump in the car and drive off. Yeah. Well, that's good to. all by itself. But I was thinking the hundred mile, that's a hundred thousand miles as a usage on the vehicle sounds like a lot. But you have to add on to the fact that it runs all the time. Well, Ford just came out thinking of that that they're selling a vehicle, you know, particular to police. They actually have an hour gauge on them now, engine hour gauge. And they're coming out with formulas on police vehicles based on hours, not just mileage now. So I would imagine you probably have at least twice as many hours as what the miles will oh, yeah. reflect. Maybe more. When you look at our primary vehicles, the, the 305 car, which is a supervisor, 310, those things are being used all three shifts yeah. every day until they build up the miles and then we switch them off and so put them to the back line. So running 24 hours a day almost. Yeah. They can be, yeah. Thank you. That's all I have. Anyone else in the section? Sure. I have some questions on traffic. Uh, I have a question on overtime wages. Um, there was a comment in here that much of the increase was due to uh, uh, wages uh, increase uh, due to the CBA. And I'm just looking for validation on that or whether the hours that jumped, because the hours are not stipulated here. Is there uh, overtime wages? Overtime wages. Traffic control and patrol. Okay, so actual in 14 was 28,466. The budget this year was 36,698. Our actual is 23,595 with two months to go, as far as the data I have. So we're at 64% uh, as of October 31st. So what is your question, You're Jerry? asking 44,349. Um, I get the right, did I get this right? I yes. believe you got it correct. And 215 original budget request was 32. I bumped up the number of responses of CERT call-outs because I have more people on it and I wanted to accurately reflect that uh, commitment we have to pay those folks. I also have currently on the CERT team, um, the tactical operations commander is a Hampton sergeant, and I believe all three of the uh, <coughs> squad leaders are also Hampton, members of the Hampton Police Department. So that does take a little bit more than somebody that's just an operator on the team. We've taken a considerable leadership role with the team. Um, so I increased some of that, and I believe the meetings that I've actually scheduled have also been reflected in that. Mm. And the uh, contractual increases that are stated in the note. Mm. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, vacation wages. <coughs> Traffic control and patrol. Um, <clears throat> original 215 budget request was 65,000. The 2015 spend rate annualized is 65,000. Mm -hmm. Last four years averaged 64, and you're asking for 86. Wages. Yeah. It's a big jump. Again, the original mm -hmm. 2015 budget request was 65,000. Year to date, annualized is 65,000. Last four years, average 64,000, and now you're asking for 86, 5, 9, 9. Again, it's the anticipated contractual increases and okay. in the people using the vacation time. So I expect that to increase. Madam Chair? Yes, sir. Was there, was there any uh, change in staffing? Um, no, the, the department remains at 34 full-time officers. It's just, it's, it's a big job. I'm with Jerry, it has, you know, you're 80, almost 87,000 
um, in the budget and mm -hmm. you know, like 2014 was 64,000 before that 59 58 mm -hmm. 74 so it's some um, it it's just a big jump and it I is. you know yep. um, I understand it is but it, it's the cost have, of but if you have the same people same number of people and that hasn't changed and, and they're getting a five percent increase I mean, they have the same number of vacation days wouldn't they that uh, would no as you stay longer you accrue more time as long as you're here you, you earn more time okay. so there's a potential for more time to be used you have quite a few people going up into the, the next if level you, yeah if you look at our current page 18 Washington, you're going to see that we have a uh, a lot of People come into that middle section of their careers. You know, so we have three officers that we hired in 14, one in 13, two in 2012, two in 11, 10, one in nine, two in eight, and then we have three in at seven, two in six, and one in five. So those people that are 10 years or less, they're starting to make those jumps in their accumulations. And their jumps not only of COLA increases, but also the steps that are built into the contract. Okay. It's a 34.6% jump. That's what it stood out. No, I didn't say it. It does stand out. Um, what I did take the time, Jerry, and I'm sorry I don't have that particular spreadsheet with me. I took the time with the 34 full timers mm -hmm. to put in their actual pay rates of where they're at now, what they project out to be at for next year, and I adopted the same formula that Chief Sullivan used based on vacation usage rates, you know, how many hours, how many officers, and I just applied the new rates to it, and that's the number I came up with, okay. and based on accrual rates also. Would that hold true for personal days as well? So you're seeing the same relationship? Well, personal days are different in the fact that uh, by contract you get two personal days as a full-time officer, but that change is based on pay rate. Okay. Not so much accrual rate, but pay rate. Okay. Uh, Chief, it still seems like a significant change, though, even when you toss in everybody moving up in pay, but do they also, you have a lot of people getting more vacation weeks than they? Yes, as you stay along, Michael, there's break points where you gain more vacation time. Right. Depending on the, your length of service with the town. Right. Okay. On top of that, you have step raises right. based on your length of service with the town. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you add those things up, plugging them into the spreadsheet. No, I'm, I'm yep. not. I'm not debating your figures. I was just yep. basically asking. Do you have a large chunk of people who are going to get another week of vacation in 16 and they did in 15? Because that might explain that 33%. Well, again, that's why I highlighted the years of hire and how many people in those years. They're coming up in, you know, under under the 10-year mark. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of room for advancement under the CBA mm -hmm. of the time you pick up, also the steps. So what, what do you start off with, with as a vacation the first year of work? Is that a, the probationary weeks? year, you can... Um, you get two weeks of vacation, okay. but you can only use one week um, after oh, six months. Yeah. Okay. This first six months, you can't use vacation unless okay. it's an emergency and approved by me. And when does it when does it jump up the next time yeah. after five years or something like that? No, it's I want to say six years. Uh, you get no. the third week, and then keep ten and nine or ten, you get your fourth week. So you go from eighty hours to. To 120, 120 to 160 in that mid range of That's the six years and 10 years. Yeah. Something like so, that. under the 10 year mark, you, you almost double your vacation. A lot, a lot of those people you mm -hmm. rattled off are in that, those categories. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. follow that. That's Thank the sort of rationale, though, we need in when we look at that mm -hmm. and we see the jump. But if we had a rationale that explained it to us, right. we wouldn't have the question. Right. I mean, that, that explained it for me. Uh, I have. Gasoline comes up there, and I'm not going to say any more on that. <laughs> Thank you. Last time. Training and recruiting. Original budget request for 215 was $2,000. It was defaulted to 1500 Year to date, you spent $141. In the last four years, you averaged 170 You're asking for 3000 Comment. I would put it right on mine, Jerry. Jerry, with the last time we talked about that. So, <laughs> you want to go around and around again? I will, but I don't think uh, anybody else wants to listen to us ramble. 
Let me just double check one thing, Jerry. We're on the same. Yeah, that's line. account eighty one hundred. It's a very long one. Three. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong one. Yeah, and again, Jerry, I know it, it's you have your issues with it, and I and I understand and respect it. Uh, but it's the same argument as you saw in the admin one. It, it's it's a line that reflects tuition costs for specialized schools. And the other one I, I, I got to bring to light is I did get notified by the New Hampshire Police Academy um, that moving forward they're in dire straits with their budget also. Uh, it's getting pretty critical up there that they're actually discussing charging municipalities tuition. If we send an officer up to go to the academy, mm -hmm. they're talking about charging a municipality a tuition for that now. And many of the classes now that we used to get for free, you know, field training officer. You can have officers teach the new officers. That used to be a course that was free. Yeah. We now have to pay for that if we send somebody up to it. Well, we saw that yeah. in our own. What we used to be free jumped to 35, then to 75. Well, it's the push down. I mean, everything at the federal level is getting pushed down to the state, and the state's pushing it down on us. And some of this stuff we'll talk about in a couple other areas. It's going to reflect that. Mm -hmm. All right, anything else on this section? Nope. Nope, okay. Um, I'm going to throw it out. You want to keep going? You want a five-minute break to freshen yourself keep up? Keep going. Let's, Let's go. Let's take a break. Keep going. We're moving now. We Let's keep to going. Let's keep going. Come on, Brian, we're hot. Let's go. Yeah. Let's keep going. All right, we'll keep going. If you need to take a break, take it. Let's get up it. and take it. Um, we're not doing any voting during this segment, so if you need to take a break, take one and rejoin us. Um, so, Madam Chair, just to be clear, we're moving on from traffic control and patrol? Yes. yes. We're done with that? Training. Okay. Training is next. Support services. Well, actually, control? training period is that section. Oh, oh sorry, pardon me. Top the of the expensive page. training. Is that the specials? Um, let's look at that. Training, yeah. This whole promotional testing. No, I don't believe so. Hold on one second. Training for 33, I mean 30,000? Uh, training for $22,074. Uh, uh, yeah, totally, th 30000 Yeah, so training is, yeah, it's, uh, 30, training is at Point well 30274 Um, it's up 21.62%. Mm. And that is... I have one question there, Madam Chairman. Let me just, for Let's Jerry, if I could just throw out there for one it. second. Yeah. Some of the increases that we're experiencing in that area are due to things such as we carry a lot of less lethal options. I'm sorry? What's referred to as a less lethal option, a beanbag gun. So instead of we have a, you know, somebody that's deranged or not complying and we don't want to get in close and we don't want to use a, a deadly force situation we have other options to utilize so some of that is replacements for some of those things because they have a shelf life um, the OC spray we carry the pepper gas mm -hmm. about two years we're over way overdue to restart replacing the stuff that's out on the officers belts but also the crowd control packs that we carry in the vehicles um, a lot of that stuff needs to be replaced it's getting obsolete the seams start releasing and you'll open up the cabin and sometimes there's pepper everywhere so we have to start getting rid of those things now uh, so that, that my, counts overall, for some of it. my overall question on this before you go yep. further is who are we talking about here in this training I know you've broken it down in sections this one's just training that would be anybody in the department because anybody, anybody. that works first that carries these tools has to go through these specific use of force trainings so what you'll also see, it's adjusted for conducting new, two new classes of part-time officers across the board, increases in ammunition and less lethal munition costs. As you remember, we adopted the program last year that we ran a class through the academy that started at the end of January, came out and they worked the summer with us. Mm -hmm. During the summer, we also had another class in right. the academy it was, it was that came article. out in August. We went yeah, through the Warren article, exactly. So we wound up utilizing them. We were notified by uh, the academy because of their budget uh, cuts. They will no longer be operating uh, the summer academy. Summer. So I guess what I'm looking for is where is the first round of training? The first round the of budget. training coming up is actually we, we've been doing the recruiting. We've no, I mean in the budget. The I guess I'm not understanding your question. First round, you had two rounds of training for the specials last year. Correct? One Correct. in the fall, one in the One started in January, one started in right. June. Right. One was in the budget, one was in a warrant article. Correct. 
The one that was in the Warren article isn't going to be conducted this year because they, they're not doing the summer course. Let me finish up. That's what I was trying to get to. Okay. That was a Warren article. There's still some money left in that, but that is specific to that class from last summer. I can't use that based on the wording of the, war, uh, the Warren article. I can't use that for any new people coming in, this, in 16. It's specific to that summer class of 15. So I have money in that a little bit that we're going to use for some of the equipment because these folks weren't supposed to come to work to us until the summer of 16. Some of them started working early, so we spent some of the money on equipment to get them up and running so they could be out there helping us direct traffic. As we go into 16, we'll spend some more of that money on those seven officers only. It's restricted to those seven officers, mm -hmm. okay? So that warrant article can't be used for anybody else. What I'm proposing to do is still run two classes. We're going to start a class in January or February whenever the academy does the part-time class. There is also one that's supposed to start in September. So instead of doing a summer class, I'm going to try to do one in the fall. September. So I'll still have two classes, but they're all both going to be out of the budget as opposed to one budget and one warrant article. Okay. Because I promised I wouldn't come back with another warrant article on the specials. That's okay. On that. Where in the budget is that particular? Where in this budget is that line? For the two classes? For the two classes for the specials. I think you'll see that reflected in a number of different locations such as this, because you'll see the note adjusted for conducting two new classes. Oh, yes. Across the board, increase of ammunition. Training and recruiting. So yeah. that accounts for some of that increase. So it's, in the, it's baked in the budget. Huh? It's baked into yes, the budget. Yes, because I said no I, pro I promised I wouldn't come back with it. I didn't like doing it last year, but, Jerry, I did felt I didn't have any other choice because I had to get some people in the door, and that's the only way I knew how to do it. You got 27K-ish, 27.6 or something left over from last year. Now, you're going to use a little bit of that, you said. In January or February for the set of offices or whatever. You're talking about in the Warren article. Yeah. Yes, year. that will be used. I have told, I believe it's 2017 to use that money right. based on the language of that Warren article. But so that'll get you that'll get used up on those seven offices. Instead of, you know, we're we just had an, uh, a weapon for weapon swap. Yeah. Our old weapons are getting swapped out, including for the part timers. But it also requires a new holster. So the holsters for those seven folks are going to be purchased out of that account. Any new equipment for those seven officers will be purchased out of that. Now, we don't have any left over at all? And if so, what are we going to do with it? The warrant article? If yeah. I have my way, no, I'm going to spend it all down on those seven people before 2017. Because okay. I know 24000 I don't disagree, is a lot of money, but when you're talking about equipping and training seven new yeah, officers, I just it's really not. Because I saw it in there, 37 yeah. or whatever, and if, I thought maybe that if you weren't going to spend it, it would go back into general mm -hmm. revenue. No. Back into the fund. I really couldn't answer that because the finance, you'd have to ask finance on what happens when we don't. I don't know. Maybe it'd be lapsed. It yeah. it I don't know what unexpended money from Warren Article it goes to, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. My plan is to use it, but we'll okay. jump that hurdle in 17. And this year's classes, the January, February class, and maybe the September class, is in will the be in the budget. budget. It's in the budget. Okay. It's in the budget. And for those classes, you're anticipating how many individuals? I would. I was hoping that I was going to get a total of 15 for this coming class, but that didn't happen. I'm down to eight, so I'm hoping I pick up at least seven or the offsetting number. And understand hiring processes are long. I got eight right now. I would suspect by the fourth of July I won't have all eight of those. Just numbers being what right. they are, I'd probably be down to six or seven from the the January Academy because people come up with problems or something comes up where we can't use them. Right. Um, and then whatever the offsetting number is. <laughs> From that group, I hope to try to get into the September Academy. So we'll probably start recruiting after town meeting and run a test sometimes after, sometime after town meeting, depending on where we are with the budget. Mm -hmm. That's my goal. So that wouldn't be 15 for the fall. You'd be targeting more like 20. Again, it all depends on survivors. Because <laughs> the budget I have is for 15. Everything you'll see, I think, reflects 15 officers for each session. 16. So right now, I only got eight. So if it stayed at eight, then I'd be looking for seven come fall, based on the numbers I have in the budget. Or if I could get more based if there's any overages, then absolutely i try to get more because it's one of those things. Um, I just received a resignation today from a longtime officer. Um, I, have, I have made a conditional offer of employment to another officer for full time based on an a, a, uh, anticipated uh, retirement in January. So that's, well, that's great. For the person that retired, it's a long career, 30 years with the department. 
it's a negative for my part-time ranks. When somebody goes from part-time to full-time, as great as it is to get one of our own homegrown talents, <coughs> it's still a negative against my part-time ranks. So I am down right now to 28 qualified part-timers that I can, if I need them, I can call them. I'm down 28. to 28. So for the public's sake, mm -hmm. the $99,500 warrant article that we all voted on yep. for last year, can you explain how many officers we got out of that and how much training went on? Can you go through Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we began our process and we ran a summer academy at Hampton PD. We were the satellite site for the academy for the Seacoast, which okay. that, because of their budget, is gone. Uh, we won't be doing that anymore in Hampton, but we were able to train them in-house uh, during the months of June, July, and they graduated, I think, mid-August. And how many were there? We wound up graduating seven. Seven? Yep. Wow. You know, we started with a higher number, but it's, it's a commitment. You know, you're talking about 28 yeah. hours a week during the middle of the summer. Um, but we did wind up with seven, and they did come in handy because at the end of the summer, we were having significant problems trying to staff a traffic control program we have with the HBAC. I heard you. Uh, and we did an expedited training program put on by uh, Lieutenant Goditis and his training staff to get these guys up to speed at least to handle the, the uh, traffic control portion. So we were able to utilize them for the rest of the summer for that. We're going to get them back. So far right now, uh, they're all, they've all indicated they're coming back. Uh, we had a number of them in for interviews for the full-time position, and they're excited about coming to work here. Good. Um, Seven anyway, right? <laughs> Yeah, the problem, Jerry, is this, is, and I know we've talked about it, but the issue with recruitment of law enforcement is getting worse every day. Uh, I had the chance to meet with the chief from Manchester, Nick Willard. Great guy, and he loves us because he's getting great people. He's gotten four of our part-timers in the last 18 months. Uh, <laughs> we should get some money from him. If we could, we would, Jerry. Trust me, I've, I've explored every way we can either do contracts or get money back. There's just no way with a part-time employee we can't. Um, so Manchester has 20 openings right now. Derry has six, Salem's going to have a couple, and those in Nashua, I'm sure, will come knocking, and they know the product we put out. We, we, we do a great job vetting these people because the, the hardest part is when you get somebody, you're about to hire them, and something comes up that you didn't find out, and you've got to wash them out, and you've spent all that money on them. It's a lot of money. Training is very important. But just hiring is, I'm talking just the hiring, hiring part. Hiring, getting through the testing. Psychological so when, testing, physical testing. When Manchester sees that they worked with us and they look at the background, it's identical to their agency and they're an accredited agency. Right. They know we've done our due diligence and they've had great success hiring our people. So that's what we're up against. Everybody's got full-time positions and we're only offering part-time. So how many did you get from the regular program last year? Seven. No, I mean, that's the additional program. The regular, oh, the regular recruitment program. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> number. Five, six, seven. We had eight, but one's going full time, so we're down to seven. Now here's here's what uh, just to give you an example. So overall for the whole year, you got an additional fourteen then. Yes, seven and seven. Yeah. Well, that's better than some years. Well, Much better than some years. If yeah, I hadn't yeah. done, if we hadn't run that summer academy, we, we wouldn't have got that. So you think having the two different sessions is really paying for itself, in your opinion? It's the only way we can keep up. Because here's, you know, if you look back to last year, class of 2014, mm -hmm. I believe we hired either seven or eight last year. I got one left. Wow. From last year, 2014, I got one left. Wow. 2013, getting grabbed. 2013 was eight again. I got two left. Class of 2012 was a dozen. We did hire four full time out of that class. That was a good class for us. I'm down to one. The next junior person from 2012 is the class of 2003. I don't have anybody in that 11-year period still working for us. So they're going other places for more money, right? Well, they're going full-time, Jerry. That's the thing. I'm offering a, a part-time position yeah, working tw roughly a 12-week season. Time. They're going to Manchester for $58,000 a year to start with health benefits and retirement. Yeah. I can't offer them that. So you can't blame them, um, and I can't hold them to a part-time position in lieu of a full-time. You just you. can't legally. It's so 12 weeks is the most we can get out of them by the, all the different rules we have and got. They by. work year-round, but they work a regular schedule, and, and I did save a little money. I cut back to an 11-week season this year, and then that's what my projection is next year. We're, we're ending the season on Labor Day as opposed to Seafood Festival. I have to because the taxpayers shouldn't be funding. You know, we went through round and round with this with oh. the Seafood Fest. So well, I cut they, that week out. But if they reimburse your money from the seafood festival, okay, that would pay for your specials, though. 
No, because it's detail, okay? And oh, it's not specials by themselves. <clears throat> okay. No, no, it, it goes out to the call list if it's overtime, and oh, the town okay. was paying for that, a lot of that. Okay. I cut the season off at Labor Day. So now anybody that works a seafood fest above me on my normal scheduling of four to five guys a shift has to be born by the vendor, whatever event it is. Because keep in mind, it's not just seafood fest. So we get done Labor Day. We have a special event every weekend down there out the Columbus Day except for one. And those but are all details. Those have to be details. We, the taxpayer can't afford it. I can't afford it in my budget. Right. So if they want to have this special events at Hampton Beach, and I think they're all wonderful, I do, I, I enjoy them. They have to bear the cost of it. We can't afford it anymore. So we wouldn't be able to use the specials because that it, they don't qualify for these details. Is that what we're No, doing? they do. They do. It's okay. contractual. Let me explain what that is. Okay. We have our full-time. Mm -hmm. We have our part-time. Mm -hmm. By contract, all extra work has to go through the full-time ranks. I, I got you. Twice. I understand completely. Then it no goes problem. to the part-time. I'm all set, Chief. So <laughs> the part-timers do work a ton. They do work a ton of it. Good. It just has to go through the full-timers first by contract. No problem. I'm all set. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I think we've killed training. No, I have one question oh. on training. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> Promotional <laughs> testing. <laughs> Almost. Promotional testing. Yeah. Just trying to help you out. <laughs> 2015 year to date annualized is $344. The last four years you've averaged $1,260. Why are you asking for $3,900? Well, Jerry, let me ask you who's retiring next year? <laughs> I mean, when I keep going like this, I might consider that. <laughs> no, what that is, Jerry, is if you look at the seniority list yeah. of the department, and I, I joke around with people, you walk the hallway at the PD, we have all the pictures of the full-time folks up there, yeah. starting with the command staff. Well, if you look at the top four people are there, three of us are eligible to retire anytime we want to go. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. You get down to the next list, you get the sergeants. There's one sergeant eligible to retire. You got on the next wish, you get three or four patrolmen that are eligible to retire, and here's the thing I know. Okay. There's always one out there you didn't know was going somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Just they decide to pack up and move or go on to something else, mm -hmm. and you have to have the funds there to run promotional testing. We are um, in the process right now, in anticipation of retirement in January, setting up for a promotion test in February. Okay? So that's one. What happens if I lose a couple more people with the ranking positions? It's not a cheap thing to run a, is a it. Is it probable? Test. At this point, yeah. Every year, finance calls me for the list of people that are eligible to retire in the next year. I got to give a probability rating. Okay. Now, most people, it's been fifty percent. You know, I put myself as fifty percent. Fifty fifty type of thing. Right. Exactly. It's a, it's an exact science. But there are people that we have the offline discussions, and they're, and they're pretty good with us, giving us an idea where they're at. There were more people above the fifty percent than I've ever had to do, because we're getting we're getting older. That end of the, the, the seniority list, we are getting older. So each each promotional test is how much, did you say? Uh, it varies, but let me look. I think I get some. I might have that data. Just curious on that. I, well, here's, here's the one you're going to like, Jerry, because it's the private sector getting us again. You, you, can, if I give you the book company a call for the book list of my test, can you do something about that? <laughs> sure. We run the same test. We have a contract that says we have to give a written test and then we do an oral board. They both count for 50%. Yeah. The written test, we, we use a, uh, a company mm -hmm. that specializes in personnel and police departments. Mm -hmm. So we have to pay so much for the test itself. But there's six study books that the officers have to study to prepare for the test. And we have to provide, and we have to provide them. We don't have them? No. But even if we did, it wouldn't matter because we ran a test. When was the last document test we ran? February. February. Right. Guess what? Got to buy new books. Mm -hmm. Have they been upgraded or something? Every year, six months they will upgrade. Nobody book just gives you the inserts as to what the changes were. Absolutely not. You don't make any money that way, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the game of the game. It costs money to do these things, so it may only be a minor paragraph change or a sentence or a cite. But in order for us to properly give the test that we're giving, it has to be based on the books that they say, and we have to provide those. So what we have done is if we have, let's say we have 10 folks that want to test for sergeant, we'll pair them up. So if you and I are paired up, Jerry, you get three of the books, I get three, gotcha. and we have a change of the day. That's good. That's good. And some of us in the past, I know when I tested for sergeant, I get together with one guy, we get our books, and we both bought a set of the three bigger books, yeah. so we both had them. Right. When I got promoted, I gave them to him, 
and a lot of guys have done that to enhance their chances on the study. But it's a costly endeavor to run the, the test because the other thing I have to do is somebody has to conduct the process. I have to have somebody, the deputy will usually run the process, but I always have somebody from the union shadow it, so the verification. So any scores, anything we do is verified by management and the union so that we don't get any grievances on it and everybody that knows it's on the up and up. Right. I have to bring in folks from outside agencies to sit on the old boards um, and they have to come from a distance because I don't want anybody that is really <laughs> familiar with our agency uh, that's worked with us. So like I, I don't allow cert team communities to sit on our old boards because it just wouldn't be fair to people that aren't on the cert team. And it takes a lot to get through so the motion this process. jump is, is your feel of the probable probable I, retirements that may occur. Absolutely. I, I think we are ripe for some change coming in Hampton within the next two years. You're going to see it. Okay. All right. all right. That's all I had on that particular area. Okay. I'm happy to move on to the next section. Support services. <sighs> Support services. Zero. We are at... Anybody want to beat that up? Seven hundred thirty-three thousand seven thirty-one, and it's down one point nine five percent. I have that big, uh, big Andrew. jump in uniform. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uniform allowance. Is that because this year it was covered by a warrant? Um, uh, just so we're clear, I want to make sure we're on the same line. Can you give me the line number you're talking to? It is 4,900. 4,900. Okay. 4, it's, uh, we're asking for 33,000, 33, and this year, uh, annualized, uh, based through October, is 11,900. 11, so. And I believe that is accurate because we I remember last year we were doing... Um, did eight officers, and then we did the warrant article. This year, everybody's going to be covered by the budget. Makes sense. Okay. Thank you. If that may, yeah, I hope that makes makes sense to you. Yep. I'm going to give somebody else a chance before you, Jerry. Okay. Okay. That's fine. But we'll be after Tim. Well, this is the part where my favorite line item comes up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Radio, maintenance. That be Radio maintenance. Radio <laughs> maintenance. I knew you were going to go there. Yeah. We didn't mow any lawns with this account this year, did we? I can't <laughs> promise you that, Tim. Um, you know, I'm more of a bottom line budget guy. You know, you can only get me in trouble if I go over the bottom line. You know, um, <laughs> radio maintenance. What one do you come on? You, which one do you want to light me up on? You know which one it is. I don't. I don't want to light you up at all. I'm just. You know what I mean. You, you, <laughs> and you know from your earlier statement, which I did appreciate. That I think you know, good uh, visibility to how money is being spent is the entire purpose of accounting. No other reason of doing accounting other than give visibility of how money was spent or will be spent. Mm -hmm. So when we uh, describe accounts that are not descriptive of their actual usage, it kind of defeats the purpose of doing accounting. Yeah. So one of the things you saw, if you're looking at the uh, Radio maintenance is general maintenance. Uh, you know, last year I understood. You know, we were doing some lawn mowing or something like that there, and and uh, w general maintenance is uh, is that general maintenance on radios, for chance? Excellent, <laughs> excellent. And Just so you know, what we're what we're up against with the radios and it's a technology based issue is. You have a radio. Pop it out. A number of years ago, the state of New Hampshire, um, through the Department of Safety, we went to what's called an Astro system. So literally speaking, if we get called, uh, you know, we did, it did happen. We got called up to Lincoln, New Hampshire years ago when they, that boy went missing. We're interoperable now. Or we go to UNH to work with them. We have their frequencies in this radio, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, the first generation were much bigger and cumbersome. We still have some of those. But as we move on, they don't make parts for those anymore and the bench time on those is much more costly because they can't just pull something out and put a new one in because they don't make a new one so they got to either fix it or we got to get a new radio so that's some of the part with radio maintenance we're talking about plus the ones in the cruiser mm -hmm. obviously so radio maintenance work. is only for the old radios no no it's for any radio that we have a problem with. okay it could be any radio we have a problem with but what we're up against what we're starting to see is that generation of radios is starting to fade off 
at some point we're probably going to have to come in either with a little warrant article or try to get a grant somewhere to update those radios. That's where I was going with that. There's going to be a cost expense coming up because the generation of those digital radios is starting to die off, including in the cruisers. So general maintenance is, in fact, maintaining radios, right? Yes. Okay. And uh, CCTV... Where did, you, where did you get the mowing the lawn thing from? Did I say that to you? Yeah, I came up last year. He was spending it for something like bullets, and uh, <laughs> uh, I think it might have been the fire department that had a similar line that was doing lawn mowing. I'm not sure. Okay, because I don't remember lawn mowing. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, well, I could have. The CCTV, that was taken I out. I do remember we agreed that radio maintenance wasn't as descriptive as it ought to be. I mean, you, you had highlighted that earlier tonight. Tim, I will be the first one to tell you, I get confused by it sometimes. Right. It, so I just want to get mean? clear on what it is, that's all. And that is my next drill down portion right. of the budget this year is to try to get that. So the CCTV camera replacement, I assume that they're transmitting their images via radio frequency. No, 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 no. Oh, okay. He needs so one. That's by wire. wire. That's gone, that's, anyhow. What's up? The 33,000? Yeah, gone. That's gone. Not on a Warren article. It's just gone. It's in the it book. is on a Warren article. Ah, that's that's why we took it. Right. Okay, so that comes out of here, then. The CCTV is the closed-circuit TV system within the PD. We were looking for 30,000. I believe that reflected some replacing camera stuff. But what we're up against now is, again, that system went in in 2005. Right, yeah, I, I, I saw all that. Yeah. Uh, so that's so going to I just be want to be clear on my book here. That's right on page 22. I have 33,000 that just goes out the door for a oh. CCTV. Okay. And then we have radar certification and repair. Mm -hmm. 1500. That's still there. It's still legitimate. Yes. I don't know why it's in radio, but that's okay. We're going to fix that next year, right? <laughs> well, 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 you know some Tim, here's what you could do. Yeah, I know radar is a radio as frequency. A citizen, I acknowledge that. As yeah, a yeah. citizen, if you got some suggestions on how I could reword these, I would certainly entertain it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Radio supplies. Now, these are parts, I assume, for radio maintenance. No, the, the pull stop for the one more. <laughs> okay, thank you. I have no further questions. Then. Batteries. I knew I needed a break. <laughs> All right, Jerry? Yeah. Okay, that ha that's, I was just looking at the uh, summary budgets that we got. That 33K is still in there. No, it's out. If you look at the notes on uh, page 22, it says adjusted by BOS at request of police chief, remove 30,000 for CCTV camera replacement and increase radio supply uh, line by 3,000. So okay. yeah, it so took 30,000 out because we're not going to, we're going to shoot for that in the warrant article. So that Do drops I, to 13, so 13,750 is the number then? Yes. Right. I was going to say, yeah, that's what I'm, my, my first question is, is this is being covered by the warrant article for the close of, for the... Uh, yeah, but it's, uh, the, the warrant article is going to be much higher number because my DVRs are starting to fail, and we have to redo the whole system. If we're going to do it, we got to do it. And my second thought was, maybe this is a number de another December PO special. But you can buy I it. would bet, Jerry, somebody else has already discussed that possibly. Okay. Maybe. That's where I would either... Great minds think alike. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um... That's what I had on the, hang on now. Uh, oh, you're going to like this one. Gary, you always. This is a good one. You're going to like Keep me engaged. You're going to say, that's not you talking, Gary. <laughs> I looked very hard at part-time and full-time summer coverage dollars. I bet you do. Um, and I combined them in their budgets and their actuals. And there is some margin of safety built in. But with the crowds and the issues of the day, I feel it's prudent to leave the two budgets alone. Wow. I'd hug you, but I don't want to lean over full. <laughs> what can I say? I'm an honest man. I call it as I see it. And I hope that was one of the areas I did want to highlight, too, looking at scheduling and being realistic about what staffing is going to look like for the foreseeable need, future. You need some of that pulse and pull right in there. And I understand that, but you know, the only thing I want you to understand what that took for me to do is We're not when I look at full-time people, these budgets yet. I can plug in specific numbers for people over the course of a year. With part-timers, it's much harder to do because they come and they go so quickly that I have to use average numbers. But looking at the average, knowing what my staffing is going to be for the foreseeable future, and cutting the schedule by one week, I made the adjustment. Well, this one here bothered me for years. I know. The part-time and then the part-time specials and then the full-time <coughs> going part-time. Well, if you looked at the budgets alone, they didn't line up the way I thought they should have, but when you combined them, it, I think it satisfied your purpose for the covering for the summer, and you need to cover the summer. Don't talk him out of it, Chief. 
All right. <laughs> I think I speak for shot, everyone, Jerry, when Jerry, I say we we're all glad know. that you feel better about it. I that. do feel better. All right. It. Let's I'm move on to the next one. I'm glad everybody's feeling good on this side of the table. Anybody else have a question on this section of the budget? Training and recruiting. <coughs> well, yeah, you know, you, you're dying on the training and recruiting. Asking 23, year to date, we've spent 9,500. The last four years, we've averaged 15. Uh, now, Chief, that's all on the specials. Correct this particular yes. section. And, and again, Jerry, just to go back to the Warren article, all of the recruitment I did for that summer class last year, I did it out of the Warren article. I'm not going to have that money for this coming year. I got to do a double recruitment twice right. to get it going. Um, because keep in mind, we don't run a fiscal budget, so we trans we cross over. So I'm going to start recruiting probably in January, or February, to test in March for the class in September. I'm going to start recruiting again probably in July for a test in October to get people ready for the next year. In many ways, I wish we were fiscal because it would be all contained in one, year, one fiscal budget, but that's just not the way we do it in Hampton, so I have to, mm -hmm. I have to leap for it. Can we decadent the 23037 by, by some amount that's left over, the 27.6K? I mean, is that, you said you were going to spend some money in January, February, March on, on some of these seven guys, so... Uh, that is a possible thing that we could talk about with any of the overages from this budget, and I get, that would be a discussion with the manager as to whether that was a priority to do that with that money. That, it's a possibility. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's all I have. All right. We killed this section. <clears throat> We're almost done. What is a senior police custodian? I'm sorry? What is a senior police custodian? That would be Mr. Gay. When is I didn't say who. I said what. Been there a that long time. Mm -hmm. That's what makes him a senior. Yeah. Well, what makes him a custodian? And what does he do? He cleans. Good job. Good morning. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. He cleans the building. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. He's, he's probably the busiest guy in the building because he went from that old a little decrepit PD, but yeah. we had something that was four times the yeah. square footage, and yeah. he had a heck of a winter uh, trying to keep us able to get in and out. He was, he was great. Four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning, we call him during one of these storms, and then there's Billy, and you know he's another one of our senior employees. He's been with the town over 30 years, and he already was out there in a blizzard, Cleaning pushing that up. huge snowball we have, and keeping so people can get in out of the PD. It's not an easy job. So, Good. there's just a small question on us under special details. Why was there an ex expenditure under um, internal private detail? Are you talking it under the fund 26? No. Where are we? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Under special details. Line 1980. Uh, we had a number of projects this year um, that were <laughs> town projects. Yeah. And I'll say there was a miscommunication with a, uh, or a difference of opinion on some of it about how we needed to fund traffic control for that if you're going to utilize police for it. Okay. Yeah. The problem I have is when it is a town detail, it's the officer's overtime rate, if it's a full-timer, if he's working over his 40, but this time of year for a part-timer to come in, it's a straight rate. <coughs> it's hard to get guys to come in at the straight rate to work a road job for the town, particularly some of them are nasty, dirty, and bad timing, you know. Mm. So in order to cover, say, a most recent example would be the Exeter Road project. Yeah. Okay. We did not build in to the bid on that project the costs of police officers for the traffic control. So what I recommended to the manager was to allow me to spend and pay the officers for that particular one or any other ones that we felt the need to do at the, overtime, uh, the detail rate the private detail rate, which is $35 an hour, or the officer's overtime rate, whichever is greater. That's what a private vendor has to pay. Because it's the only way I could get officers to come into work. The other problem I would have is if we have to utilize officers from another community, which we do frequently. We use Seabrook a lot, Greenland, where we need police officers and we can't fill it with a Hampton officer just because of staffing shortages or we're busy at the beach, whatever it is, I have to be able to pay those folks. Mm -hmm. So the only way I can pay them to get them to come to work is to be able to pay their detail rate. 
So if a Sheberg officer worked the project up on Route 1, we would get a bill from Sheberg on their detail rate, and that's what that expenditure would be for. So that was someone outside of town, otherwise it was right. absorbed by the budget. Do you know how much, off the top of your head, um, was expended for the, for the details for the Exeter Road project? I don't have that number off the top of my head. I could probably, with Christy, get that number for you if you need okay, it. Okay, could you furnish that? Because I'm, I'm supposing that that was a unique situation where it wasn't built into the contract? It was. I think it was a miscommunication with, and, and here's what we're up against is, when we have these bigger projects come into town and we want to get competitive bids, but you also have to, you know, depends on what the traffic safety needs are going to be. Yeah, it's and easy. that's hard to estimate sometimes it's easy with to these leave jobs. The so sometimes, out. in the past, we weren't getting it done, and I've got a commitment from uh, Public Works right now that any of the bigger projects, any of these things are coming to town, we're going to be at the table to go over it with right. the vendors to go over what we expect. So you got caught in the middle of that. A little bit, and I don't think it was anybody's intention. No, it was I, just one of the things that got. And I don't care who's. The cracks. I honestly don't care. Yeah mechanics of it yeah. other than the fact that that is something that perhaps should have been part of the bid, the bid configuration absolutely and was unique let's say to your annual budget <clears throat> and is now in the budget mm -hmm. and would roll over to a default budget mm. that's when I wouldn't know that apples the logistics for apples. On that so one. I'm I just that. bringing that up because it's uh, it's an anomaly of sorts. Mm -hmm. And if you could, it doesn't have to be exact, but if you have some sort of a value for what that detail for Exeter, On the Exeter Road job? Uh, for Exeter Road costs. Oh, yeah, I'll try to dig that down. I would appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, that's all the questions I have. I, on I have section. one or two comments here. Electric uh, chief. Yep. Year to date, we annu I annualize that. It comes up about 47,000 to 90. The last four years, you've averaged 57. Your budget is now calling for 69, which is a 46% increase over the two. So we can move down to the next rate. section. Yeah. Please explain. Okay, I no, just want to make sure. Okay. Well, I think that's, isn't that a global issue in the town, just like the fuel? Yeah. That, you have an so that much to? of a jump? I don't think I've, I've experienced a 46% mm -hmm. jump in my electric bill over the last year. You residential. Oh, yeah. That's commercial. Mm -hmm. Do you have any appliances in there that, that are sucking down the current? I mean, does anybody come in, like, uh, I would you say, tell, come in and do an energy audit to see just where that current is being drawn I believe from? Mr. DeRoches was uh, was drilling down with that, we were providing him with some account numbers, and he was researching that through the, uh, the Energy Committee, but I don't know what the results of that are, Jerry. That might be somebody to talk to, because I think Dick's on the ball on that stuff. The other thing is, you got a police station there that's got good sun exposure. This is a pretty good application for solar. And you might be able to, you know, net meter a lot of your energy back into the meter and just not have this kind of a bill. You're talking about utilizing solar panels? Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm all, if, if it's affordable to do, I'm, I'm, I have no opposition mm -hmm. to that. I believe they already looked at it. Well, I mean, 69000 you know, <laughs> there's nothing to sneeze about. So, I mean, either we've got equipment in the building that's sucking current we're right here. that we don't know about. Maybe an audit needs to be done by Unitel for nothing. Or we're losing, he brought us down maybe, maybe it's the heat. I don't know. Maybe we're, maybe the building's not insulated well enough. Oh, yeah. <coughs> but in any case, maybe solar should be looked at. I have no objection to that, Jerry, but I don't think that's going to be me as chief of police looking at that. That's going to be more no, the engine okay. commissioner. And mm -hmm. That's a more of a global issue for the town than I think an individual department. Mm -hmm. But I'm not opposed to it, and I don't disagree with this. All right. We can't do anything about solar in this budget. Um, Tim. You cover uh, elections. I mean, you provide details to elections, right? Those would be an example of a, um, a town rate detail. Next year we have uh, three elections, kind of uh, the most we have in any given year. This past year we had what, one. Are you uh, costing that into your budget, the three elections? Not really. It's not, it's one of those things that is a town rate detail, it doesn't amount to a huge number. Because mm -hmm. the other thing is I do not permit outside uh, departments to work our polls that has to be a Hampton officer if that means I got to go up there and stand there I will or one of the lieutenants will or the deputy will um, 
So headquarters becomes wherever the elections, the polls are. Uh, on many days, those elections, absolutely. We okay. do go up there to make sure that um, the town moderator is satisfied with uh, the situation. And let's face it, we, we do like our politics in Hampton, and we just want to make sure that... We do? Oh, we love our politics. Mm -hmm. I mean, but we've had issues where we've had scuffles mm -hmm. in the Gauntlet line because... Oh, of, yeah. We've had those things happen, and we're there to make sure that anybody that is trying to exercise their right as a citizen can do so freely without intimidation, and that's we're why we require... not questioning the validity yep. of, of the detail, just the existence of and whether you've been able to account for it, how you're accounting for it, and you answered me, and I thank it's you three for to that. four guys each, each election is generally the, what we try the, to do. The uh, present year, uh, you've had a couple of events that went on high. Yep, political events. Yeah. Yep. And those are details. Are they paid for by the uh, person renting the Winter County High School? Or is here's, uh, here's where we go with political events, especially the w folks that um, come in from the outside for national politics. This is where really every four years we run into this problem. Mm -hmm. My line is this. If somebody is here for a political event and I, rec I receive a request from a bona fide law enforcement uh, agency that's providing protection for somebody. Governor Christie came to town. He comes with a detail of New Jersey State Troopers that he travels with. If, it, if it's based on a request for mutual aid and assistance, we do that out of our budget and on overtime. Mm -hmm. When it becomes a pure political issue, I have to divide the line. So let's say we get Hillary Clinton comes to town. She's come to town several times. We divide what is mutual aid to Secret Service and what's traffic control to the campaign. We break it out. Okay. So when it becomes an issue of something for the campaign, they get billed for it. But Hillary Clinton's a unique person because she is under Secret Service protection as a former First Lady and because right. she's a former Secretary of State. She has... Secret Service and diplomatic security folks with her all the time. Right. If those folks ask for mutual aid from Hampton PD for protection issues, we provide that as part of our mission. Right. If it's a campaign stop and she needs officers out directing traffic at Winnicott and all that, the campaign has to pay for those officers. Because traffic is not considered security. No, not, totally not different. Not to mutual aid. Right. But what about when Mr. Trump comes here? He is not subject to Secret Service. No, he doesn't he's have any officials. Guns with him. Any officials who are. Uh, I think you might people. have been there when he and his campaign person and I had a dissertation where he was told he was paying for more because I wasn't scheduled to go to that event. I didn't anticipate that it was going to be that bad based on what they told us, and it was double what they said. Oh, yeah. And yeah, I won't repeat what I said to him because it wouldn't be appropriate for the television audience, but there was a lot of this going, Tim, and I think you saw me doing it. And warned them that that's not going to happen again in Hampton. We expect that when you come to town, you tell us what your security needs are, and we'll tell you what you need. And it'll be based on what I determine as chief of police. So I, what I happens need. in the case of a Trump? He pays. He got a bill. He paid for your time there? Yes, he did. Okay, great. Uh, now, on to the building side. Thank you for that yep. information. Uh, <clears throat> now, there's been a lot of talk in this town, and a number of officials have been in giving words of encouragement to people buying flood insurance. And I believe that your police station is also in the same flood zone as the rest of the beach. Do you have flood insurance? I can't answer that question right now. I'll have to research it for you and get back to you. Well, you probably already know the answer to it, right? <laughs> well, I haven't been able to find flood insurance anywhere in anyone's budget. Oh, okay. Yet mm -hmm. I have officials telling people on various form or for all. That they are, that are might be private covered. citizens should buy flood insurance. Well, it might be on the municipal insurances. One that one category we have, which we didn't get through, finish reviewing. Yeah, because yeah. the figures weren't in from the state, the percentages and so. That on. is not a question I can answer for you. Right, I appreciate that. So I just wanted you to know the, 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 the uh -huh. nature of my question more fully. Well, perhaps. And I thank you for your time and your presentation. And thank you, Madam Chair. Perhaps Christy could enlighten us. Christy, do we pay flood insurance for any of our buildings? I had to look at the policy. Christina is more familiar with the policy than I am. Okay, you could let us know on that. 
You know, one has to have flood insurance. It's just most mortgages. Well, the fire station is down there, too. So I don't know. No, I just find it interesting when, when an entity encourages others to get in flood insurance, mm -hmm. and that entity itself doesn't have flood insurance. It seems to be a bit uh, curious. Well, I'm sure Selectman Bean could shed some light on that, but we won't get into that at this hour. <laughs> All right. And just for the record, I have encouraged nobody uh, is a public official to secure flood insurance. I can, I can, uh, I can support his statement on that. Okay, here we go. He's not one of the culprits. All right. Any other questions on the building yeah, station? Yeah, I got one other question. Build? Okay. Before you, Jerry, is there anybody else in the room that has a question? Sonny, I'm going to let you go. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Jerry, you mentioned the electricity. You know, the town's looking at putting solar on the landfill, that'll give you a PPA of fixed cost to pick up the energy cost for all the municipal buildings. I just thought it was for the, uh, for the, for the uh, EPW. I've, got a, I've got a dumb question for you, though. I see you uh, an item in the budget, $100 to feed prisoners. You're spending more money on hay for the horses than you are for the prisoners. <laughs> Yeah, well, if you're an animal lover, you understand that. But yeah. you know, no, it's just we very rarely um, have prisoners that stay for any length of time at Hampton PD. We I try to we so try to does. minimize that to four hours, and if they're going to be tied up with us for more than four hours, we send them up to the uh, county jail. Yeah, I just threw it yeah. out because we've been having all kinds of questions. I got to be honest, I can't remember the last time we actually spent money on food for a prisoner, but it's always been something we've had there just in case. So when I come from my overnight stay, I want food. Yeah, Michael. <laughs> you may be there You're a unique you person. Think. You got thrown out of the PD. You didn't get brought in. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're getting close here, Jerry. Well, one other question. This came up last year, uh, Rich. The custodial services. We budget a couple of K in here. I don't know, but this year, 533 year to date, and then the last four years, $338 average. Mm -hmm. So either either we're not char he's taking his vacation, we're not charging that account, or we haven't got it budgeted right. No, I think what that is, Jerry, is, is in the event that we had to bring in his absence when he takes vacation, if we had to bring in an outside vendor to do that. But we've been fortunate enough to have somebody inside the building that uh, comes in and does it for us. It's already a town employee and a member of the Teamsters bargaining unit, so we kept it inside that. Uh, so I think that's probably what it is, and it comes out of a different line. It probably should be scored when he does that against that account, and I'll look at that, but I believe that's what's happened. It hasn't been scored against that account. Consistently. That was explained last year, too, the same way. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. So you're saying that we just found it's it's cheaper for us to bring in a current employee that's there that knows the way out of the because the other problem I have is if I bring in security. an outside security vendor, security issue. Yeah. I might have to put an officer with them going yeah, to yeah, certain yeah, areas. Right. Yeah, it's just so easier if I get somebody that's already passed my security yeah. muster. That's good. So we're we're doing it, but we're doing it with, a, with an in-house employee. And I'll look at that to make sure we're scoring that right. That might be just something we could score better for you and better reflecting that line. Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't have any any other questions. Uh huh. Okay, I have just to, um, great job letting us know how many gallons and fuel has been used along the way in a breakdown, but on heating That's fuel. That's more Christy than me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take credit well, for that one. <laughs> appreciate that. When it comes to heating fuel, though, I don't see any breakdown from a gallon <clears throat> standpoint on that. We, we're using oil. Is that correct? Gas. We're using no, gas. That's gas. Is that gas? That's gas. gas. I, well, yeah. Okay, I'm just going by yep. heating fuel. All right, so that's gas, and that's right. Scared me there for I'm going, where's the oil tank? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's probably right under my desk. Because <laughs> that's where all the utilities are. Natural gas. The, I'm buried and in the backyard. My, my last question would be on that bottom line that says grants. We're showing an expenditure of 18000 <clears throat> That's a question mark. Line 8990. It says unanticipated grant. Well, in here it says unanticipated grants. This just says grants. Oh, I believe that what that line reflects is every year the department participates, and primarily it's a lot of the grants have been. They're gone. They yeah. just federal government doesn't have the JAG grants as much or the enforcing underage drinking laws. We primarily what you're seeing there is the highway safety grants, DWI patrols, but pedestrian that's, that patrols. That would be income. Huh? That's income, chief, right? 
that's income, but we have to spend the money somewhere. Right. So when an officer goes out and works, and, and the highway safety grants usually run from, I want to say, May till September 15th. Okay. So we, we work them, we pay the officer for them, and then we get reimbursed for them after we submit our paperwork with our, we're required to provide statistics, the stops, it's DWIs, all of that. There's a there's a form that's a general form for New Hampshire Highway Safety that covers all their grants, and then you just have to fill out the right one reimbursement number, okay. and then we get reimbursed for it. So I believe that's what that's. So reflecting. we'll see that offset by revenue. That's right. Yes. Okay. That's. It that kind of throws you a little bit. Where's the money coming from? That, that was my question. Another question with that. That's not always, like, you'll expend that money before they decide what the highway grant is. Is that my right? It depends writing? the formula of the grant. Okay. okay. We will get sometimes, and we don't get them anymore, uh, the JAG grants, Justice Assistance Grants. Mm -hmm. We would get a block number, and we'd have to put in specifically uh, what we were buying, like riot control gear we bought one time. We bought some equipment for the mounted, and we would price it out. And we get the checkbook and pay for it out directly. Mm -hmm. But with these highway safety grants, they're reimbursable grants. You spend the money, you show the product, you get reimbursed. So it's a dollar for dollar trade off. Yes, and that's what you're going to see more and more because it's just those block grants that used to come out mm -hmm. for hiring officers or the justice grants. Just the federal budget just doesn't can't sustain it any longer, so you don't see them anymore. And uh, I guess at least not I'm, for our size agency, you won't. I guess what I'm getting at, there won't be any delta between the two. You spend 10000 you'll get 10000 Exactly. Back. With that number you see, we should be getting reimbursed to that exact number. Exactly. Exact. Not that you'll spend 10000 and possibly get eight. Exactly. All right. Clarity on that one. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? And I think this is, we are at the end. We're at the end. Thank you, Chief. Uh, Health and Human Services, uh, ACL. Yeah. Animal control. Yeah, oh, animal control. It. Repeat. It's the repeat budget. It's uh, minimal increases due to, I think. Yeah, page on that. Um, it's uh, OBS 41, and then I got page 47. 41? Yep. Page 47? Yeah. yeah, and I think that only forgets, uh, reflects. Obviously, the gas issue, Jerry, I understand. Uh, it's the same on this one. Uh, $1,000 yeah. increase in supplies and expense. Page 47. That's yeah. due to the fact we Page bought the new vehicle. Um, and we have to equip it with update, update stuff. A lot of the stuff, I don't know if you saw Pete's old truck. Yeah. We're starting the week, and some of the stuff kind of got mangy. Oh, and now see this. So we're just upgrading some of the equipment that he has. That was the only thing that jumped out. Yep. All right, going around. Place. Any questions? All set. All set. All set. Oh, good. I don't look at it. Emergency <laughs> management? Yeah, we can do that too. 1,000 hasn't changed since Forever. we've had emergency management. I mean, I don't want to deny you that having to. No, you know. I just want to say that we, we did our due diligence. It's $1,000. It hasn't changed since my time in the PD. Uh, and as emergency management director now, it's $1,000. Most of the stuff we get from emergency management right now, we do it through a reimbursement. If we do the drills, submit the money. Um, at some point, I think we're going to have to maybe look at changing the way we do emergency management simply because emergency management is an expanding arm of government, federally and the state. I probably spend more time talking to uh, Homeland Security emergency management than I do any other an entity outside of town. It's just constant. So just put it on the radar that at some point we're going to have to talk about some serious issues with right now we have no gas or training huh? right now we have no gas or training in that budget no we no. 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 absorb that out of our own budgets and we get reimbursed when it's appropriate and that's a new fire station huh that's at the uptown fire station. EOC is at the fire station right yeah. correct we just uh, we did uh, participate in a practice drill a couple weeks ago we have another practice coming up and we do have a graded drill coming up next year well, the reason why I asked because we changed all that stuff around at that fire station. I'm just wondering, when they put the EOC facility in there, supposedly, did you get everything you guys needed for that? I don't remember how that all No, went. we're working on, one of the problems we do have is using our wireless devices, the, the phones. It's like a cave in there. But we're working on getting matching funds from Homeland Security <coughs> to put in the booster system so we can utilize our phones in there. Okay. But it should be a minimal thing in not something I expect to happen right away, but I don't expect to 
be coming back to you for big money on that. Something I'm talking about a couple thousand dollars. So how about other forms of communication like internet or what do you need? For ham radio. Um, we've been using uh, personal ham radios from either members of the fire department or the police department. What I want is I want a ham radio there with a proper antenna up there. So, you know, what happens if one of the people we've been using the ham radio isn't available? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. We should have it. It's minimal cost. We're talking... We're talking items of a thousand to two thousands tops, and a lot of times I can get matching grants or I can get it donated. So I'm not, I don't spend a lot of time hopping on that. I try to get the, the things that are really the nuts and bolts, but I'm just putting it out there for the future. We got to start considering um, emergency management as a budget entity to its own more than a thousand dollars because when you look at places like Seabrook, they have their own emergency management division. Okay, it's not the man emergency management director in Seabrook isn't the police chief or the fire chief. It's a separate entity. Oh. Now, they got a nuclear power plant in their yard, but I look out my window and it's right there. So just moving forward, that is really the way you're seeing uh, public safety going with emergency management. And it's just, if you look at the state budget for it, there's an area that it is expanding. The reason why I ask because they had to, they used to be in, the, uh, uh, in that building before, and there was a room about the size of a postage stamp. Yes, it was. <laughs> and uh, I just wondered if this is only a, a little bigger, and I know we tried to put some of the backup for, for equipment for t televising, too, so yeah. in the fire station. We have plenty of room over there, um, and Ch Chief Ayot and I talk weekly uh, about that and many other things we try to collaborate with. Um, so that's just one of the things we know moving forward we're going to have to be looking at seriously because it's just becoming that push down on the communities from the state. Mm -hmm. It's just... It's growing, and emergency management is one of those areas. Thank you, Chief. So, thank you very much for coming in tonight, too. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's all I have. No warrant article discussions tonight, I understand. No, thank you, Chief. Oh, okay. That's another day. I know. It's a chorus. Yeah, yeah. Get, get them officially thank first. Thank you. Thank, thank you. All right. That hasn't happened yet. All right. So. Okay. Before you escape, and Stephen's chomping at the bit to make a motion, but you can't do that yet. Yeah. Um, out, I have... have Looking at calendar and what's left on the municipal calendar, I have scheduled um, another session in January for Warren Articles. So we'll have our review and we'll have two sessions for Warren Articles. Unfortunately, they'll all be in the same week. Um, the new date that was added is January 8th. It is on a Friday. Cable is going to try to accommodate us with a broadcast on that we're hoping madam chair i think we need more than one more additional Next chief. Need a, need thank a you well couple thank i you. i would say that there's only so much we can do with the calendar michael well, and I'm, I'm, at this point yeah. listen oh, yeah. at this point i think we've done enough budget review with the department that everybody should be starting to prepare their own Excel spreadsheet um, for the review. And we need to tighten up a little bit more how we approach things. I think tonight we probably could have condensed a little bit by an hour. And um, not that we should race through things. This is a multi-million dollar budget and we want to give it its due. And we have two more departments coming in that equally will be as long. But when it comes to the review itself, and when it comes to the Warren articles, I don't know that we need as lengthy a discussion, one for one. It's, somebody once said, try to say it in 20 words or less, and I know I'm guilty of not being able to do that, but when we start thinking about review, and we start thinking about the volume of Warren articles that will come before us. And this is nothing new. I mean, I know we're talking about a lot of Warren articles. <coughs> Some of us have been here before. We got through it in one session, never mind three. So I think if everyone comes prepared and doesn't ramble on and on, and we'll give some consideration to the other two sessions that week, starting at 6 o'clock if we need to. So you're going to have the final budget review after we do the warrant articles. Yeah, we'll do the warrant articles first. So right now the positions, all I want you to take out of this tonight mm -hmm. is that we have the 8th on a Friday night book, January 8th. I got it. Okay, and we still have time after that if we need it in the following week, but I'd like to have two solid nights of warrant articles and then the budget review if we wrap the warrant articles up earlier 
then we can start the budget review. Okay. But okay. don't save your preparation until then. Okay. Start your notes now and make them con as concise as you can be. That way you should be able to, with the Warren articles, we'll be approving or, or recommending or not recommending, which makes that easy enough. With the budget, the way we've done it this year, we made it a little bit more difficult for ourselves because we haven't made any motions as we've gone along. But that doesn't mean you don't come in department by department with your motions ready to go mm -hmm. and a quick vote. We've discussed it to death. So when somebody throws something out there at a point, a dollar value, there shouldn't be a whole lot of discussion on it at that point. It should be yay and nay or an amendment to the dollar amount, and we'll come out with a conclusion at the bottom. So just a forecast of things to come. I've listened to everybody with the need to put another session in, and we have it. And hopefully, like I say, we'll be accommodated with cable, so we'll be broadcast. Not I'll be crying, but... See what happens from there. We really need the uh, young designated fund balance as well, so that we don't start approving warrant articles that have money in them taken out of the undesignated fund balance and we we'll fall below the, the safety. Well, balance. obviously, we're about as transparent as a group can get. And all I can tell you, Jerry, is we've asked 15 ways to Sunday. We've asked it yet yep. again oh, tonight. I, I mean, there is money in in the count. Yep. All right, and. That's what we're asking. How much money is in that account right now? We don't want the anticipated amount to come in. And yes, that is the anticipated amount is also considered an asset. But we've been asking all along for the cash amount. And it's not to grill anybody. It's so that we can make a decision on the Warren articles that they want to have funded from these funds. Yep. So. It appears we're not going to get an answer to that. Well, because you know, cash doesn't exist, as you, you listen you to know, the time. We don't have an answer tonight. today, and we're not there yet. He's refused and based on, on the basis that cash doesn't well, exist. I'm going to take this approach in my mind, and everybody in here is always free to vote their conscience. From where I sit right now, I'm not reviewing the Warren articles. At some point, I will be. Mm -hmm. If I do not have enough information, <coughs> I will vote as I have in the past. And unfortunately, it may be a good Warren article that I would have supported, but if I don't have all the information, and some of you have sat here with me and heard this before, where there were good things out there, but we didn't have enough. Well, I don't have the information. You can't go I can't there. Be the, problem, the problem sure. comes is that if we don't have a reasonable picture of our actual financial status, then we cannot put the budget in context to our financial status because we don't have it. And none of the other Warren articles, whether they're dipping into the so-called surplus or not. It's the same issue that constantly confuses me how the uh, Board of Selectmen can generate a proposed budget to us without having any clue what the existing fund balances are and the myriad of funds that exist. They ask for money that's you know readily spendable and already existing funds, but they don't even know it's there. Well, this is our job. I would say focus in on the trust funds, focus in on all the Well, yes, that's why I'm pointing out the, the importance of, of us getting a, a, as close of a reasonable financial accurate picture as we can. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the statement that, uh, that I heard tonight would suggest that when it comes to the you know, so-called undesignated fund balance, what most people refer to as a surplus, um, is not going to be forthcoming. The key is, is there are really two components in there, as I understand it. You've got taxes that have not yet been paid but have been billed. Those are, you know, receivables. So they're and anticipated. Yet, yeah, so are they lumping that together with what I and everyone else in the world would think of as cash. Right. And, but, you know, you heard the confusion earlier tonight, which was engendered uh, for reasons I, I cannot fathom. Oh, that was a deliberate diversion. Yeah. I but, well, but I want to make a comment, if I may, about that. Yeah. At the, the audit of the end of 13... There was $2.1 million in cash. I don't care what you call it. It's cash. On hand, not receivable. Since then, since that audit was finished for 13, we spent a million last year to bring, uh, keep the taxes down. We spent a half a million this year to keep the taxes down. We spent 600 and some thousand for next Terra. That adds up to the 2.1, and I don't remember any chunks of money going into that fund to, 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 bring to it keep up. it back up again. So I think we have a serious problem right now with the lack of knowledge 
all the, we don't know what's going on. We can only base it on what we had for facts at the late, the last time we had the factual information. We can only assume it's damn close to zero. Well, we well it's get, a serious we, we question that may in fact it's, it's reflect a serious, a serious question. Problem. We don't have the answers for it. Gotta get the facts. We've asked. But that means we can't support the, ver the fact uh, that why not? Does it dip out? we don't have the, the warrant that, articles yet. The here. fact that the audit is not complete yeah. leaves us yeah. right now in thin air. The audit is about to be wrapped up. So I know it's been trying on everybody's patience and pushing us, our schedule, and things we need to do. So I would say plan yourself accordingly with the budget with a plan A and a plan B. You know, a best I can tell you right now but those numbers do have to come that audit has to come we don't see that audit pretty soon as this this uh, this, uh, this uh, variations of attempts to not disclose what is should be readily disclosable well you also don't have the, you also don't have the default budget kind of suggests that the transparency that I was certainly looking forward to in, in this year's process is uh, is not there and it's very disappointing we don't have the default budget, right? We don't have the default budget, and I have had great difficulty getting people to put things in writing. They give me a lot of advice mm -hmm. verbally, and I think I have spoken to just about anybody who's anybody in this state. Today I spent quite a bit of time on the phone with Judy Silva, who many of us respect up at NHMA, but therein too lies the conflict yep. because she represents the town. Mm -hmm. The selectmen right. specifically. And the selectmen specifically. Uh, but I've had a great working relationship with Judy and going to her for, with questions through the years. But and there are things that we can rely upon, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. And that is our own capacity mm -hmm. to read. Right. Simple words. You heard earlier tonight that you can't have a representative to the budget committee. It has to be a subcommittee. All right. Referencing RSA 32, which is the budget law, which is what gives rise to a budget committee. Yet if you search RSA 32, you will find zero reference to a term subcommittee. Subcommittee does not exist in RSA 32. Mm -hmm. So why are we being forced to create one? Well, why don't we finish on this point? Mm -hmm. But it does make reference to something very noteworthy. And it says, right after it says that the members shall elect uh, from uh, the members at large, a chairman, the next sentence says, the committee may elect other officers as it sees fit. Period. Well, we there is no qualifier to that. So if we decide, which we did in one of those consent item agendas, we decided to create an officer called a representative. That is a legitimate position created by law by the subcommittee. There is no requirement in the subcommittee, as to for, for, excuse me, for this budget committee to create any subcommittees. The word subcommittee doesn't even appear in RSA 32. The only appearance that does exist in terms of what we can create is in that line. The committee may elect other officers as it sees fit. That's and the only appearance I of the I believe that has to do with inside the budget uh, committee. Maybe like treasurer well, or secretary. Yeah. That's yeah. right, inside the budget committee. Inside, and we have offices and we're asking them to go do a duty for at us. At a point, in fact, is Nick, you serve... Just like we asked the chairman to go do duty and go ask so-and-so for information and whatnot. She's acting outside of the committee, but as an officer of the committee. We're doing the same thing with the creation of a representative. Asking them as an officer of this committee in term of a representative as to get us information. As the same... No. No, function. We're talking two different no, we're things. not. We're talking the same As paragraph of the fact, same RSA. I'll illustrate that along the same lines that Tim's talking about, but in a less contentious arena. We appointed you as the representative to CIP, and we appointed Nick as representative to the Recreation Committee. Good point. All right. That speaks to that, but it's in, again, a different environment, so you look at it different than when someone is trying to make it look like we're rocking the boat. We're, again, the intention was to do no harm. It was to fact find so that we could reasonably determine if we should recommend these expenses to the taxpayers or not. Right. And again, if we're going to work in a vacuum, it really hurts them more than it helps them. And I just, I'll rest on that note tonight. Um, 
if it's all right with the committee, I'm going to change the wording to the request a little bit and see what I get for a response. Go right ahead. I, I'm what afraid you, what that are you going to, consensus on what that. Are you, what are you going to request? I watched last night um, and what they took exception with and even Selectman Bean said it at the end. What, what is statute is statute. And it seemed the Achilles heel in number one was the use of saying operations. Operational and, procedures. Well, operational procedures. And we know what we're talking about. We're not looking to go in and undo their operations or tell them how to operate anything at DPW. But the use of the word operations became the Achilles heel that turned the board against voting for that. But they did vote on approving the information coming to us on the other articles. So what I'm saying is if one word upset all that. Reword. I can go back, mm -hmm. reword it, reword and try it. it. Go ahead. And I'm not telling you I'm going to get any better response. What, what do you got for now? What idea? have I got to lose? What do you, what Take do you the word out. On that operation all right. Last night. But that was, and I was trying to explain tonight before Fred got upset, that that's not our intent. And by now, everybody should understand what our intent is. I, I'm very proud what of this. What is the committee. intent? What is the intent of going down to public works? Information. And well, can't they, when they come, I mean, do we do that? Did we do that to the police department? Did we do that to the fire department? Have we done that? Have we, we gone did to that the for fire? the IT committee? We've done it, uh, we did it for the schools when you I were there, so did. please. I know, I know. I know. No, no, that is what, a wonderful what point. What are we that trying up, to glean out of uh, public works or any other department that they cannot come and sit here and give us the information? I think the magnitude what? is that they're asking for $5 million and more in articles. But that means in we can't offer up questions? Different for areas. Right. No, no, Nick, but no, it, what no, it means is that if they want to buy a fleet of new trucks, and if Mike goes down there, I remember last year they wanted to buy a couple of new trucks, remember? Trucks and then Mike <coughs> Plouf said, this is ridiculous, okay? And so perhaps if he wants to, if they want to replace a truck, maybe Mike would like to go and look at it. They're asking for the same three they asked for last year. Okay, but so. I did, you know, point, guys, I just really think we are out of our government. realm as a budget committee to be going down to Public Works or any other department and, I'm sorry, Mike, crawling underneath the truck. We're not suggesting that. That was done. Sorry, but it was. A couple of years ago, I was on Sandy the budget Lee. committee. I just think are we overstepping our bounds as a budget committee well, as an to be going to down to departments and looking mm -hmm. at looking at automobiles, looking at trucks. Certainly there are items down there. There are big, big items mm -hmm. that you you need a, a a housing area to go in and, and wash down those trucks, especially after they've been out softening the roads. The the town constantly, constantly turns that mm -hmm. down. Now, now so they've moved that up to a $2 million dollar Are we warning? overstepping our bounds as a budget committee so. by going down and checking on? I, I think you have an excellent point. I'm and sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. We're the budget yeah. committee. We make the budget. We're going to approve the budget. We're going to do our warrant articles. Okay, so you're saying you don't belong down there. I just absolutely don't think okay. we should be micromanaging the departments. I, That's what we pay big bucks for these guys to do. I agree. If they're going to, if, if we have specific questions that we can ask, we should put them in writing. If they don't want to answer those questions and they're going to come here and say, I want three new trucks, well, then you better bring plenty of proof in pictures or whatever. I mean, the town clerk came up here and said, the reason I want to increase my budget for my part time staff. This is the paperwork. It's in Appendix G of our book. She show, had a picture of all the files that didn't get filed this year. And that's a powerful statement as a picture of all the work that hasn't gotten done. If well, you got three trucks that are in that bad of disrepair, bring us evidence of your trucks that are in disrepair so that we can make a better informed decision. All right. Well, you know what? Rather than belabor this, can I have a motion? Excuse me. I have a All comment. right. Well, go ahead. Thank you, Mike. Come in, too. Mike had his up, too. I... As I think many of you remember, I, I did not agree at, in the spring when these committees were created uh, because I didn't think it would be productive. But nonetheless, the committees were created, and since the budget committee created the committees, I want to con I want to do all I can to encourage their work. In fact, I even got stuck on one. 
<laughs> but Which one was that? That doesn't, that doesn't change my point of view that the subcommittees uh, was not going to be a productive way for us to do our work. I still believe that, although I have tried to be productive mm -hmm. as, as a committee member. Subcommittee. <clears throat> there have been challenges with the DPW. The DPW committee was created because it was perceived, and I agree with this perception, that we have at least one, probably two, members that have a degree of expertise in that area. And that they could uh, educate us from a budget committee perspective in a way that we could not get educated from simply having an interchange with the DPW director. Right. So the budget committee took that position. Having taken that position, the DPW subcommittee was basically dysfunctional. And that's my opinion. It was basically dysfunctional. And as a consequence, there became a, a kind of a row that was developing, and as a way of quelling that row, the concept of creating an, a, an officer called a representative. So that we didn't have to go through this subcommittee stuff. We could just directly, under RSA 32 colon 16, using the law of what our duties and authority of the budget committee is, needs to say, you, representative, you go directly to the department head, which the law allows us to do, <laughs> and that's what we did. <coughs> and what happened was we got a reaction from the town manager last night that, oh, no, you can't do that. I mean, it's clearly spelled out in RSA 32. Roman numeral two spells it out. That we do have that authority. And, and so now, for me, I'm long past the question of whether we should have subcommittees because I don't think we sh I still don't think we should. I'm long past the question of whether we should have a DPW question because the budget committee already said we need one. So I'm going to support it, even though I don't agree with it. I am long past all of the questions about whether or not we can ask the right questions and get the knowledge we seek. Let me toss this out. I'm not done. This is but I am at committee. this point. I am at this point. We are not slaves or subordinates to the town manager or to the board of selectmen. We are a separately elected body. And if we cannot stand up for ourselves, then we fall down quite definitely all over the place. We have to stand up for what is our, our authority and our duty. It's absolutely necessary that we uphold our duty and to have other people tell us what we can and cannot do when the law clearly says we have the duty to do so. I say it's a matter of our own integrity as a budget committee. We either hang together or we will surely hang separately. Yeah. Thank you, Tim. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. Sunny. Yeah. I think what's missing from this is the town manager can say what he interprets the way he wants to. We can interpret it the I'm way I'm not we interpreting. I'm until reading Until you it. get a legal ruling on an RSA we got a brain. on the intent of the RSA in the court. Okay. You, you will fight I'm it. just no, going right. to I'm, I'm going to throw this out. We could go around the table with this another 20 times. I think we've got two choices here. One, Adjourn. to leave. Oh, no, that's choice God. number three. Oh. <laughs> the first one oh, is that we revise the question, send it back, and see if we get something else on that. The second one is that we forget about all of it. No reword. All right, I will and move, no, you minute, I will move that you change operational procedures Tim, to finish. services performed as specified in the law. I'll Hold second that. Go ahead and finish your remarks. Yeah, let me finish what I have to say first. Thank you. Appreciate that. And the second one is that we, we at this point, we're so late into this that we forget about the visit to DPW. I think both of you should probably have it encapsulated in your brain anyway and move on, but I would tell you that I would expect that DBW session to be lengthy, and there's a lot in DPW. Well, they got a, a new one last night with the $1.8 million bond article, yeah. which I know very little about. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's four parts to it, and it was a big PowerPoint presentation. There's he big money in these Warren articles, right. and they have assessing the needs for that. I'm going to throw out, I know it's late. I'm about as tired as everybody else is here, too. But we had a year where, in the 11th hour, a $4.6 million bond was thrown out here for the pump station. 
Remember that? Yep. Okay, for those that were here. And I mean really in the 11th hour we had Which heard was that anyway, yeah. nothing about it. What? Church Street Oh, that one, yeah. The same year as the first issue. And we agonized over that because on the basis of what we had done in the past, if you didn't come before us, if we didn't know anything about it, if we were shooting in the dark, excuse me, Tim, all right, we wouldn't vote to approve that. Right. We wouldn't I, I approve. We wouldn't vote to recommend it. I agree with that. If we had not voted to recommend it and everybody took our recommendations, we ran the risk of the beach overflowing. Yeah. All so right. So that really put up. We put our backs to the wall, and some of us who ordinarily would have voted one way had to turn around and say, "Well, we've got to trust in this and do it that way." But I'll tell you, for those of us who sat on that committee thinking about spending 4.7 million dollars of taxpayer money, because when you do that, I have to remind you, something else doesn't get paid for. And 4.7 million, you go years of something else is not getting paid for. That's a big trade-off. That's a big responsibility. So when we have warrant articles coming in from DPW to the tune of $5 million, and one's in this week, one's out next week, one's back in, one's revised, we don't have a clue and you're not going to have a clue till you get the final drafts in January, mm -hmm. all right? You should know a little bit of something about what's going on. So if you feel confident that you can do that without sending a couple of soldiers out to fact find in the meantime, and you feel confident that you can do that in one session with DPW, I'm with you. But I'm telling you that there are consequences, good and bad, of not of being underinformed as it pertains to the welfare of the community. The budget committee will be damaged for a long time, if not irre irreparably, by, by not defending its uh, duty as defined by law. Black letter law. No room for interpretation. Madam Chairman, I want to oh, say, right, I've been waiting forever now. Um, first of all, I was a selectman in reference to the pump st station. We had the same problem. They come in and say, it's liable to blow up any, major, <laughs> any minute. Have, were you ever inside that pump station when, the way it was, was before we fixed it? It was all rusted apart. The handles were falling off and everything. Mm -hmm. When we saw that, we said, we don't have any choice. Mm -hmm. It's not up for grabs. We don't have any choice. Mm -hmm. That's looking at it from a selector. I was in that. So I, I was sympathized with yeah. the budget committee because we were in the same boat. Yeah. Now back to the problem at hand. But you had access to go see it. Yes. Well, you could have too. Back then we could have. You're yes. right. But now here we are in another situation. Oh, the, yeah, but let me so, finish the point here I want to make. <coughs> that gentleman knows that sewage treatment plant upside down, in and out and everything. That guy knows more about trucks. We've been through this. And for us not to take advantage of their expertise and have them go through the departments is a lousy excuse for not doing a job the way it's supposed to be done. Just because the board of selectmen and the town manager want to be difficult or whatever you want to call it, that's for them. We should try to maintain our job and do it to the best of our abilities because we were elected to do that. Right. We are elected by the voters in Hampton right. to watch out for the budget. And we should look at the equipment. We should look at the trucks if we want to. And if they don't like it, it's too bad. We are doing our job as per the statute. You see that, Sandra? See uh, that statute? Good show. It's all Anybody, interpretation. It's, it's all easy to yeah, read. It's not. It. It's it not difficult. All right. Or then let's get let everybody go home soon. Do I have a motion on the floor of what course I of action to take? What was the motion again? To change operational procedures to uh, services performed or whatever it was. Let me look it up. Just take the words right out of there. Services, right services rendered. Yeah. Change operational to services rendered. <coughs> That's what okay. you said before. Mm -hmm. And you second it? Yes. All right. Do you have do you have what you're gonna send to them? Yeah, we already yeah. Up last We time. already did it. We're just a minute, we're just changing the wording. If operational troubles everyone, like I said, the end result may be the same. But if operational bothered them? So services performed is the phrase. Services, services performed? performed? Okay. Can I have a vote on that? 
This was passed unanimously last. We're just changing the phrase from. It was not passed unanimously. No, no, no. no. Oh, that's right. Uh, Jeopardy. Yes. Stewart being a and pain that night bean, too. And huh? and bean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Hand, hands up so we can have a count because remember our secretary is remote. Three, four, five, okay. six, seven, eight, nine, nine, four. All right, nine. and nose. So Nick is One, a no, two, Jim is three, a no, four. Brian is a no, Sandy is a no, and abstentions. Nine to six. Nine of oh no, nine to five. Nine to four. Nine to four. And That's I'm it. sorry, Scott, were you for it against? Four. Four. Okay. All right. Well, there's two people missing tonight, right? We only have 13 people. Well, Bean, That's is, right. Bean would say no, right? He, he but there was somebody it. else missing. Right? Yeah, Dave would. Oh, right. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Okay. All right. Ready so I'll movie? I'll change it, and then after that, then we have ready. no other no other options. Are you ready for a motion? I have a quick question. Absolutely. Just, I'm sorry. No this you know, looking forward, okay. When we this, it's a 26 million dollar budget. We, there's a bunch of line items in this budget. In in our final review, are are we going to look and say, okay, you know, we didn't really get a good answer on electricity for the for the lease building. So are we going to say we'll take 20 thousand out of that? No. I mean, are we? Motion can be made and second, yeah, and then we're yeah. going to vote on it. You can. Well, I, I don't know that. I, I, I think, Ooh. first of all, it's 420 line items. Yeah. I've counted every one. Yeah. I looked at every one. Yeah. You're asking, I think you're we asking are, for a we ought to come in with criteria by which we make a decision, and that's really up to each individual member. Right. What, what I intend to do is come in and say a statement based off the total analysis that I've done from A to Z. I think this is what I think based on these facts. And then adjust it accordingly. By line item or in total? Or how yes, do you, you well, want it, the line it, item. It, it, line it, it, it can go line by line if you want. Budget again. Right. Well, I don't think it can items. go. It can, well, this is a review and it's everybody involved. I pick. mean, mm. last year some of us struggled and we did a line by line by line by line, but when we came in, it was a matter of, all right, reduce the gas lines everywhere there's a, there's a gasoline line to yeah. this amount of, to this percent, or by this percent. And so some of them may be grouped together. Um, I hate to use this, but I'm going to. In the police budget, there are multiple lines for training. Sure, yeah. yeah. You may decide in the police budget that in a lump, this amount should be paid and let him redistribute it where he wants. Okay, um, I, I'm just it, I'm just using a for instance on how you can take multiple lines and put them together. Mm -hmm. You're not going to nickel and dime this budget and say, well, I think it should be instead of five hundred dollars, four hundred and fifty. That's crazy. Yeah, you know, find the big things that you have problems with, and we will go down department by department. But as we do them. Everybody should be prepared. There'll be duplications in some things, and that's where there'll be amendments. We don't have to speak for an hour on it. Just I think it should be this. It should go pretty fast. One line mm -hmm. line. It, re it really does because you w there won't be as – there are big blaring things already. Oh, yeah. Okay? But you're not going to take every single solitary line and nickel and dime it. No. That in reality, in all the years I've been here, that doesn't really happen. Everybody, if all 15 people here might have a few things that they've keyed in on. That's where having this many people helps because we don't all have expertise on everything. I, I always defer IT to anybody but me because I have no clue. All right. Some are more abreast with fire departments. Some are more depressed. Uh, in with the school department and understand those expenses so that's why so many and I'd start doing that from now okay that way if you have questions when you look at it and now you start to look at it saying do I want to hold this recommendation or do I have a better one and I'll, I'll give you this too for guidance you don't always have to take money out of the budget that's proposed there, we've add. had times where we have added money. Right. We had for fire, two we, firemen one year. We had we put four firemen right into the budget, and got them. Uh, two. Two. I'm sorry. Two. It's okay. But we we had years that correct. we did that. So you may look at some lines and feel they're underfunded. Just come in prepared, please. Yes. 
All right. Motion. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Okay. Ed. All in favor, say aye. At 10:19. Thank you, everyone. Endurance.